Hello, everybody, and welcome to Save or Die Outcasts. The <coughs> writers are bearing down on the party. I want to make it known Half that Garp was there, readied with his um, spear. If someone's like charging at him. Yeah, because you see them in the distance, and everyone hides in the tall grass. And Garp is there looking like he's <clears throat> making making lunch, right? But as yeah. the riders get closer, and you can you know, they, you can see they've come out of the plains, and they're on the what passes for a road in this area, and they are barreling down towards you. There are four of them, uh, three with lances and one with a bow. And you've got enough time to get up and grab your weapon and stand in the middle of the road to face them as they begin their approach. Neil, can I ask I you have, a quick question yeah. about mechanics here? Yeah? They're moving. If I want to cast a spell <coughs> at them as a group, like I know I can't hold a spell. How could yep. I How could I do that? The, well, the, uh, you've been laying in the grass, sort of? right? You're trying to keep yourself hidden. So you're gonna be, you need to stand up to your full height in order to cast your spells. So you'd have to reveal yourself to them to begin I with. But whether I want to risk doing that depends on the, the mechanics of, of this su being successful. I want to yeah, know, like, well, there's, there's going to be a gamble because you're going to roll for initiative, you're going to cast a spell, and then we'll see what their positioning is when your spell goes off. And they might be close together or they might be far apart. Okay. So we're rolling initiative now. We're rolling initiative now. Okay. Let's fucking go. Um, now, the bear is hidden in the grass, Renatus is hidden in the grass, Arrakis is hidden in the grass, and Garp. What should I roll for receiving Standing charge? Open. Um, it's like nothing, right? There is... No, there's a... Sorry, I should have looked modifier up section of your character sheet... Nope, it's not there, but it's in the player's handbook. It's such a rarely used thing, I didn't yeah, even I bother putting it on the character sheets. <coughs> but it's a good thing. Yes. Or Set to receive charge. You have a modifier of plus a bonus of two to your initiative, which is actually a a minus two to your initiative roll when you're setting to okay. receive a charge. So I go to four instead of a six. Got it. Yeah. Uh, it it rolled. Uh, <clears throat> what I should do here? Do I get like double damage on hit two for this? I can't remember what it is. Yep. Uh, I with a spear you do. With a glaive, I would expect as well. Let me pull out the good old combat and tactics. Paper books are better than digital <clears throat> books. Everyone should get paper books. <laughs> but hardback books are better than both. Yes. Mm. And better than that is spiral And you want to talk about paper books? books? Boom. I got mine oh. right here, ready to go. Um, Excellent. Nice. <laughs> Having to look up rules immediately. I know. A, B, C, D. So. Man, it'd be great. Pull arm. Here we go. Hike. Blah, blah, blah. Pull axes. Glaives are simple pull arm <coughs> that consists of a long curve. Blah, 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 blah. Okay. Yeah, whatever. It's a point. It's essentially a spear. I think you can set to receive charge. I'm fine with it. Cool. I'm set to receive charge. Wearing my mother's necklace. Nice. Donning Worth 2,000 gold. In chain mail. No longer a frog. a frog. Yeah. <laughs> mm, oh, and no you need to roll at... Five. There we go. Okay. Uh, all right. Arrakis. Somehow you are the first one up. <clears throat> well, let's go, Nick. Somehow is the it's only got initiative of one, so it's likely to be the first one up. Yeah. Um, I cast sleep, so my understanding is all creatures have to be within fifteen feet of each other, so I can probably only hit two riders and hold their horses. Yep, that looks like it to me. Roll um, your two d four. I'm gonna target the back two. You're a genius, Nick. That's ninety feet. It's thirty yards. I think that that's reasonable. 30 feet is 90 yards. Yep. 
20 yards. 30 yards is 90 feet. Yes. Yes. Okay, so, you're so I roll my 2d4. Yep. Mm -hmm. I get five. Five. Excellent. Um, two riders will immediately pass out and fall See, off, off their, their horses. horses. Waking up. Probably. Essentially Waking up, Trump, but yeah. losing their horses. Well, and you know, you, you would fall yeah. to the side, not over the front of your horse. Would <clears throat> uh... You're not going to ever fall over the front of your horse unless your horse comes to a complete no, and sudden this, stop. The first guy might fall backwards or get run over by the second horse. That's true. I think that's fair. It's not impossible. Yeah. It's, ab it's not I impossible. I will roll a, a saving throw for him. Yeah. No, it's fine. He's fine. But why don't you roll me d6 for each of their damage? They're not falling from 10 feet, but they are moving forward <coughs> and falling like unconsciously off of a horse with no ability to protect themselves. For the archer. And um, nice. first guy. Nice, Nick. You're on it today. We oh, got it right. Damn. Um, I their their horses will essentially just run away from what's happening here. So I'm not gonna take the tokens off the horses. We're gonna leave them where they are. Um, but that's what's what's going down. Um, Ooh. and they will fall. Okay. Initiative. Next up is Grau in the bear form. Mm. In the tall grasses, the horsemen are beginning to thunder by. Brum, brum, um, brum, 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 brum. Yeah, I guess like since we're revealing that we're attacking now instead of getting to a better position, I guess I might as well attack now. Mm -hmm. Um, I want to charge forward and claw at the legs of the horse <clears throat> to bring it to fall on an attack. All right. Um, so is this a, you're just standing there and swiping at it as it's coming by, or is this like you are leaping on the horse and I trying to knock leap, the horse over? I am leaping out of the grass at its feet to bring it down. Okay, so this is not a series of claw and bite attacks. This is going to be like a grapple or an overbear, or like, um, it's going to be one of these like knockdown goal attacks. So you're still going to need to hit its AC, but then we're going to use a combination of, um, we're going to use strength checks and you're going to get some surprise and some other bonuses. You both have four legs, so we'll sort it out. Make me an attack roll. Sure. Um, and you've got plus one for flank and plus one for surprise on this. All right. Just my bear claw attack. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and with another plus, plus two, two on top of that, it'll hit 10, which hits the horse. You would need 13 to deal damage to the horse, but just to contact the thundering horse, a 10 is all you need there, buddy. That's right. Um, all right. I'm going to get one of these horses. Do, 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 do. Oh. Four point penalty, precise difference of the largest attacker versus the defender. Da, 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 da. Okay, I want. I need you to make me a strength check um, against the horse. And the horse is going to make an opposed strength check as well. Under normal circumstances, the horse gets a bonus for being larger than you and a bonus for having more than two legs. However, it's also <clears throat> running straight down the road and you're hitting it from the side. So I'm going to... Um, reduce the penalty, uh, reduce its bonus for having more than two legs because it's it's thundering down at you. And I'm going to give you a bonus on your strength check for the surprise. Your bonus is going to be two. So uh, roll strength, add two to it. We are going to roll horse strength 26. and we will add... It is still larger than you. So we're going to add four to the horse strength check. Um, so 14 is a horse's strength, and we're going to add another four because it's a size larger than you. Um, it's going to be a 30. Jesus. So you will come out, and you will, like, grapple at these legs. You'll run into mm. the side of the horse, and you'll hit it in the legs, yep. um, which will probably, you know, knock it off its course a little bit. But there's just, it's so much mass, and it's going at such a high speed that you only have a limited amount of contact time with it, and the horse just barrels on past. <laughs> I... I'm I'm also a bear and I'm growling really loud. Does this scare the horse? Does that waken its primal instincts of being a hunted animal? Oh well, 
that is, I mean, there's a surprise attack, a surprise attack by a spellcaster and a bear and all this other stuff. When the horse and the rider's turn comes along, we will definitely see the consequences of these actions. All but right. before the horse can even react, Renatus comes into his initiative. Renatus. Uh, I'm, you know what? What it's would it be like to attack a guy up? Like, I'm trying to think about how Renatus would approach this situation. Like, can I, like, attack a man on a horse as he runs? That seems like a terrible idea. I think the best thing to do would be for me to wait, right? I'm waiting until Garp is actually engaged or Grau is engaged. I'm waiting for my moment to run out and fight, I think is what I'm doing. Excellent. With my All right. Excellent. Um... These initiative rolls are awkward. Uh, the the second horseman somehow goes before the first one. One of the problems with initiative is that you can be in a line moving, and then when you roll, all of a sudden someone overtakes the other. It's weird. Um, but we're gonna, you know, these things are all happening at the same time. There's a lot of momentum. This one might be behind the other, but clearly they were in the process of catching up, and so this one will be the first to bypass, and uh, he's just gonna lance at Garp. With and his I, long mine? spear. Yeah, you are set to receive charge. Boom. Ooh, nice roll. Mate, that friend. is an excellent roll. That is a critical hit. Which you will already do double damage. And so, what is your... 1d10, usually. 1d10 becomes be 2d10, becomes 4d10. Um, and you're targeting the horse, right? Because that's yeah. what you can charge. Yeah, that's what at. I can hit. Perfect. That horse is uh, super dead. Jesus. The horse is dead. You, your spear goes into the Shoo. horse's chest. It comes out the back of the chest. You overkill <coughs> the horse by 10 points of damage. So I'm going to say the rider gets nicked by the end of the uh, nice. glaive oh. for one. But the rider is also charging you at the same time. And they will score a natural 19 Ooh. against you with a plus four to hit when will crit you for yep. that plus an additional 4d4 you will take 18 you will deal 25 both the charger and the chargee are critical <sighs> um, oh. but the the horse goes down does this guy fall the, off his horse as well rider yeah well yeah absolutely roll me another d6 for the rider's damage garp as he falls to the ground two two <sighs> just want to make sure it should be 8d4 he, it already rolled 44. Right, I, I just that don't was know the 40. It's 2d4 for a spear, 44 on a charge, uh, and, and then, then he crit you, and, crit. and it becomes 8d4. Right, just making sure. Jesus. Yes. Did he just almost one shot you? <laughs> yeah, yes. well, I one shot hey, though. But Neil, don't you have to be holding the spear with two hands to do 2d4? When. What? I thought it was As d6 on one hand. <laughs> okay. It's, a, it's effectively a lance in this situation. Okay. It's a viable option. It's underneath one arm, and you're charging on a horseback, so that's a very different strategy than, like, holding two hands and stabbing. Sure. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Cool. Um, Garp, so here's my question, without wanting to dig too deeply into the rules. Garp, you set to receive charge, so technically your initiative was after the horseman who struck you. Yeah. So how does this no work? Is there even a point in you rolling initiative? I wouldn't feel like it. I feel like it's like you're there and you're waiting for their initiative to come. Yeah. That's your whole move. If I was yeah. like ready an attack the whole time, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, I don't understand how this is supposed to work. We're gonna ignore it and just move on yeah. with our lives. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, Maybe in the, the future, if you're like surprised, you like need to get in like place. But with this one, I knew that they were coming for a moment. Yeah, that's true. That's probably what it is. Um, the horse archer in the back uh, he was slept. He fell off his horse. His horse kept running. And he's going to have to make himself a <coughs> morale check because this is not the situation that these people signed up for. Uh, they, they showed up here to run down some people on the streets. And all of a sudden, it turned into a very different battle. Um, so, horse archer morale uh, is a 16, is not going to work. The horse archer 
arrows splayed fucking everywhere. The only arrow he's got is the one in his hand because he tumbles off the horse and his quiver dumps out everywhere. The horse is taken off. Uh, and up in the front, you know, the bloody battle has ensued. And this archer is a, a wise cookie and just, just going to fucking run immediately. Wow. The next one also fell off his horse, gets back up. His spear is somewhere on the ground nearby. Uh, but you know what? Lost my horse. Uh, someone else is already dead. It's time to fucking go. And will abandon his spear and just run off down the road. Leaving us with the one that Garp, uh, uh, that not Garp, that Growl attacked. Now this one, he's still coming at Garp on the road, right? He's got his laser focus on the the human in front of him he's charging at the human with this lance in tow when all of a sudden the bear comes out and tries to knock him down and the horse just like moves to the side with the blow of the bear the horse itself is maybe a little spooked by this the rider is certainly spooked um we're gonna see what is gonna happen <coughs> Uh, for our horse's morale which under this situation is gonna be a 12. So he needs to roll less than a 12 on 2d10. Uh, the horse is not frightened. The horse stays its course. It's a raiding horse. It's fought in battle before. The bear, a little bit weird, but it's a fast creature. It can just run away from the bear. It's the horse's greatest weapon, running. Uh, and that means the lancer is charging down on Garp with his spear. Garp. This, this is the uh, first one did 18 damage this is, uh, to you. There's a chance spicy I die moments. Here. Yeah. Garp could be dead here, right? <coughs> Garp Garp's stood in the middle facing a, a series of charging horsemen with lances and, and faced them down himself. But that doesn't mean he's necessarily going to survive it. Good It'd be luck, bad Garp. Luck. It'd be bad don't luck. Don't roll a crit. Just don't roll a crit. You'll be alright. He might roll a crit. It's a 15% chance that he crits Garp. It's a fifteen percent chance of Garp dying on the spot. This is um. Wait, why is it fifteen percent? Because he needs to roll an eighteen or higher to critical Garp. He doesn't Ooh. definitely die on a. It's clear by five. That's why the. It? Wait, it's called <laughs> safe or die. True. <laughs> oh yes! Yes! <laughs> yes. That's safe. That's safe. He just charges <laughs> past Garp. Oh, uh. Seeing Garp get absolutely mauled by this guy. I spring my trap and went over here. Uh, where do you want me to stand? Where, where do I stand to get flanking? I can make it, I think. Uh, well, this guy is currently prone on the ground. Wherever you stand adjacent to him, you have a plus four to hit because he's laid out after his horse was fucking murdered. All right, then I just, I run up beside Garp uh, triumphantly after we have tricked you. <laughs> You've been rude. <laughs> and I will swing my sword. Plus four to hit. Plus four, 19. Is a hit. The sword plunges through the unarmored man. I know the token looks like he has armor, but they don't. That's why there's AC 10 on it. Seven. Uh, seven points of damage. And then I follow up with my dagger. Shunk. With a 14. 14. The dagger hits. The man rips. There's blood everywhere. Um, and One point of damage. the only thing he has to say is mercy as he lays on the ground and the horses scatter and the one rider that survived on the horse he just keeps going he's not circling him back he's not coming back the battle's done and he's taken off um and there are two you know loose horses who are in full run you know they were well, yeah. galloping so, the riders fell off and they're just they're going they're going i would like to roll initiative against the horses to be able to cast maybe cast sleep on one or two of them Probably just one. All right. Yep. Um, uh, if, I win if I win an initiative, am I in range? You should be. They're running straight. Um. Let's see. The horse's movement rate is <gasps> 18, so they can, and they're charging, so they're going 180 yards in a round. No. By the end of the round, those horses are gone. Again. They're already. No. Out the the one at the back was over 90 yards away from me, and that one's just been going straight since his rider fell off asleep. So okay, theory, actually, you're right. So yeah. in theory, if you win initiative, one is in range of you, but that means okay. you are going to be casting your spell whether or not you <laughs> win initiative. It's fine. I think it's worth it for a horse. All right. Yeah, I agree. You have to yeah. get lower than a five. Damn, the horse got a fuck. Damn. 
Oh, Damn it, Nick. Unlucky. Oh, good try, good try. What you about burn this your spell? Guy? The horse Chance gets like away. Throw a dagger at him and knock him off his horse. I roll initiative against that us. guy's gone. I think. Oh no, he's gone. I did. Okay. I just didn't. There's nowhere else to move him. Yeah, he's Fair. just fucked. Um, um, I come. I come over to Gop. Yeah, you, I'll, I'll. August, all the, are you okay? You'll see August with a massive gash in his chainmail. Um, <clears throat> I'm okay, and I'll hold my clave to the guy. Stay down. <clears throat> I'll go and get uh, Grau. He, he's down. I go over to Grau. Um, Grau. Grau's <clears throat> injured. He needs your help. I'll run over. I can't cast in bear form. Uh, I have no fucking idea what forms I already took today. I'll say, wait, it's Grau, a new wait, day. wait. You don't, you don't need to heal me yet. <clears throat> we need to track down that horse. Well, it's a new day, Neil, but we got here when I was not in bear form, so I must must have taken one form, right? Because we started the day in the city, correct? Shit, you're right. Mm. You were I, think an orc he's right? I must orc. have been an orc because an I came orc. in and is an orc. Yeah. Yeah. We need a way to track this, I think. Um. Okay, he says I don't need to heal him yet? Yes, yeah, I tell you horse. to track the horse. Okay, I'll try tracking the horse. I tie um, the guy's hands. Uh, well, you don't need... No tracking check is needed. You can see the horse over the tall grass. Is It'll it be there. needed later when the horse is like gonna run. Is it away running or is it chilling? No, it's it's going. Um, if you've ever, if you've ever had a horse that you've like taken out and then lost, it is a many hours long process to catch not, the horse. If the horse wants the horse. to be caught by you, like yeah. if it's a horse that knows you, you might spend hours and hours mm. finding it. But if it's a horse that doesn't know you and wants nothing to do with you, um, they will just outrun you forever. So are we thinking the, the that, horses like, are gone. But humans are the best long distance runners on True. the planet. They are endurance hunters, yes. And if you wanted to track this horse for many, many days, you might be able to do so. Um, but I just want to uh, make clear that the scale of the operation is not like five minutes later you have a horse. Yeah. This is like we will take multiple days to track the horse and get into adventures along the way okay. trying to track down a horse that does not want to be caught. Out of character, the best adventure we have, aside from the main quest that we're on, is this guy right in front of us. We could beat Great. him up for information. We could go to their bandit lair. We could do something. Like, this guy is a valuable I could get asset. us a horse for his life. Yeah, well, I say, um, what do we do with this guy, then? He won't make it if we leave him here. Does he deserve Perhaps to make it? Perhaps it would be a kindness. What do you have to say for yourself? Mercy! Were you gonna give my nephew mercy? I'll lean really close to him and like look him uh, in the eye. I, I I thought you were Verasi Empire soldiers. I didn't know you were you were just normies. Normies? Oh, you hate the Empire. Oh, tell us more about how much you hate the Empire. They pay a lot for guys like you. Well, Let's find out. But, uh, um, you know, they... They're pieces of shit. Well, he's gonna have to do better than that, August. He wants to stay alive, right? What? Where are you from? These plains are my... The plains of my people. Would your people you... trade your life for a horse? Yes, most certainly. You come and attack us randomly? I think that's I saw a fair the glint trade. of your weapon. I, th I thought you were Verasi Empire soldiers. Well, Soldier. Why did you not stop when. <clears throat> well, <laughs> I guess I was set to receive charge. Never mind. <laughs> what do you want to do with him, Ren? You want to go trade this man for a horse? Well, I think you're too wounded to travel now, unfortunately. Um, I, uh, Grau could heal me up. Uh, well, yeah, I guess Grau could heal you up. Um, I mean, it doesn't get us anything to kill him. I don't want to. I'll kind of look at him and search him. Does he have anything valuable on him? <clears throat> yeah, absolutely. Um, you start searching through his stuff, and he is wearing a surprising amount of brass and bronze jewelry. He's got like, um, you know, a series of like brass or bronze shells on a, a necklace that goes around him. He's got uh, like some 
bars across his forearm that are bound together with a leather strap. Uh, he's got some rings that look like they might be fused with some other metals in there. Um, appraising, you know, this person's stuff that's on him. It's probably, you know, 10 gold worth of stuff. Uh, you know, a, a thousand copper worth of jewelry. Um, it's not nothing. It's actually... I mean, all together, it's actually quite a lot. Ten gold of, of jewelry is far more than the average person would wear. That's I will, a, um... That's some nice stuff. Sorry, I'll, I'll call out while Ren's, like, checking him, him over and yell, um... We're not gonna kill your friend. Come back and get him. To the people who fucking ran off. Sure. Uh, it's been a few minutes. They're definitely out of your shot by now. You can okay. call after them, but they're no, that's gone. Fine. It's been a few minutes. Uh, I'll ask him, like... Wearing a lot of jewelry. Are you someone important? I am one of the <clears throat> I'm one of the warriors of my people, he says, like getting up from instead of laying on the ground, at least to a, a seated position on his I'll butt. I'll move the wave back a bit, but it's still pointed at him. Mm-hmm. <coughs> uh, one of my people's horse warriors. Uh, it's a position of great esteem and honor and responsibility. How far, people? how far away are you nomads? Do you have a town? We're nomads. We're constantly on the move. The Empire destroyed our villages. Destroyed our, our stables. It destroyed our granaries. Right. What do we do with them? <clears throat> What's the I best course a, of action for our step, party? Step forward. Um, you say you confuse us for Varasi soldiers. I don't see us carrying any flags. We don't have horses. There's only one why, of us, even. Why would you think that we were Varasi soldiers? Surely you're, I mean, at the risk of stating the obvious here, a petty bandit robbing vulnerable people on the road. Who carries a, a glaive but a soldier? A lone soldier without a horse walking down the road? Easy pickings. Do you encounter and, uh, many lone soldiers on foot? There are few lone soldiers because we are here. You ever think to ask before you attack? If you're gonna Have kill me, do it now. But if you're just looking for justification, stop being such a pussy, he says. I, uh, I have a question. I say, in I, your I don't culture, is it honorable to die in battle? What is this? A game of I don't want to kill him, but I don't want to let him go? No one here is going to kill you. We've already told you we're not going to kill you. So shut up about that nonsense. He I'll starts to him. get to his feet. I let him get to his feet? He dusts himself off. Give me all he your jewelry. He begins to walk away. I say not Pause. so fast. Give me all of your jewelry. As <laughs> fight for your this life. This is a reasonable request. He's defeated. Fight for your life. You'll all your stuff. He takes off his necklace, he takes off his armbands, he takes off his rings, he drops them in the dust. I ask him and what his then... name is. <clears throat> Wait, before... Okay, yeah, go ahead. Mickey. Alright, Mickey, remember, we let you live, and all we did was take your jewelry. We annoyed you a little with conversation, but just remember that if you ever see us again. He, he didn't kill you. Please don't attack us in the future. My name's August, and I'll hold out a hand. He'll take your hand. I'll shake it. And he walks away. As oh, as I will give him to one leave. gold wait, coin wait, in case wait, he needs wait, to survive wait, wait, before wait. he leaves. Oh. I, you get ahead, more gold and, and peach shell. Does, does Growl smell any food on him? <laughs> no. Uh, there's a fresh horse right next to you. That yeah, smells I'm... delicious. Yeah. I don't know Tell if him... Grau's into, like, fre fresh raw meat that much You anymore. like the finer foods now. Mm. Yeah. I'll tell him as he walks away. Sorry about your horse. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about your chest. All right. I, uh, I go through the bags on the horse. I take the saddle. 
Yep, you can pull the saddle. It's got some traveling supplies. It's got rations. It's got um, some blankets. It's got a tarp. It's got some sticks to turn the tarp into like a little lean-to. It's got a bedroll. Uh, you can find some small coinage in there. You've got um, nine silver, uh, five gold, whoops, and 28 copper in the okay. bag as well. I will, uh, how much does the saddle weigh? I toss the bedroll. I keep the rest. I put my bedroll. I toss my bedroll. I put, I keep that one, sorry. Rather sleep on another man's bedroll than you're right. Sure, I toss his, I keep mine. <laughs> um, <laughs> oh, it see. smells like Mickey. <laughs> <laughs> saddles are heavy. I'm looking at their exact weights, but I, I watch Garp trying to carry this saddle and like shove it into his backpack. Trying to no, I'm. It's to gonna be carry. like I I pick it up and I like put it on my shoulder. And I'm going to march with the saddle, because these saddles are not fucking cheap. <clears throat> Gop, what do you think? Well, I need a horse, and horses need saddles, and these things aren't cheap. It's probably like 20 gold worth of craftsmanship. Look, I'll, all leather. I'll, I'll point at Grau, and I'll be like, can you put it on him? <laughs> 35 pounds. Oh. <laughs> I'll go over to Grau. Grau, do you mind? It's a bear no, backpack. Shake his head. I don't I think he should shake do his that. head now. Okay, okay, I'll, I'll hold it then. I'll hold it. God, God. <clears throat> when we when we find Sigrus's tower, trust me, there'll be plenty more gold than that. You don't need to look this thing around with you for the next two weeks. Listen, we're gonna stop through a town. Maybe I can sell it there. The next town's like four days away, right? There's some villages along the way that you could stop and try and sell off a, off a saddle in a village, but. How far is I'm the something village? about wandering salesmen who just show up in a town with one thing and try to sell them that kind of gives people the like the I, I would just rather <laughs> buy something from the trusted horse dealer down the road than you know the bloodstained saddle I'm oh, taking I think maybe you should uh, you should buy some seaweed back at the previous town and carry that and <laughs> <laughs> surely a fruitful endeavor I'm taking the saddle and how much is it Neil? Why? 35 pounds thank you I can carry it lads well, fine. Oh. Just make sure you keep up. Yeah. Okay, uh, you will have to drop the saddle to fight, because carrying the saddle absolutely. will take yeah. one arm the entire absolutely. time. Absolutely. Okay. And when you get to the swamp, we're going to have some fun rolls. Yeah, well, I'm going to get rid of it before we get to the swamp. Let's, I think Arrakis loses patience with them discussing with the natives, and we'll uh, carry on down the road. All right. I'll follow. Hoping to encourage them, yeah. Yeah, I'll follow... What's all of your movements at? Is everyone at like eight? I'm a I'm at normal movement, yeah. Nine. Uh, Twelve. Twelve, yeah. Uh I don't know. Yeah. Well someone's <laughs> carrying my bag for me, I believe. Twelve, which means I'm not encumbered. Yeah, well, you need to go go on your gear tap, Jan. And it should tell I, it's you it's your level. It's tw yeah. it's twelve. Okay. I notice right. I'm falling behind and I drop the saddle. <laughs> That's fucking right. Oh, okay. All right, we carry on. Days later, the party will arrive at Papari, <clears throat> the so nice fun. little village right before a town, technically, right before the swamp. Uh, um, before we get close to the town, Greg's going to change into <laughs> brrr, fucking human form. It's human time. No, it's not. Human time. <laughs> not human time. Don't, uh, don't say do those you heal me along the way? Um, yeah, sure. I would ask you. Yeah, I can heal you. We'll do a D8. Five. Five. Okay. You want more? Yeah, I got one more. Boom. Nice. Um, okay. would you have healed me the first? I think I would have asked you to heal me the first day that we like left. So you would need to swap out a bear form, be a human, heal me twice, and then swap back. Would you have done that? Yeah. Okay. Well, um, and then as we're walking near the town, I'll accost you now. Hey, Garp, do you mind throwing one more healing on me? Uh, I can, Rattle, yeah, I, I, I can, I, I, I would try. I appreciate it. Thank you. Ooh, big money. God, you're so wonderful, and I give him a kiss on the cheek. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, August. I slow down as we approach the 
town. I slow down my march a little bit to catch up with the stragglers. And I'll say, okay, uh, just before we get back to Papari here, I hope it doesn't need saying, but, you know, no fucking around. We're, we're going in, we're spending the night, we're passing through. No oh, what? No fights. human time? No, no human time, time no brawl fights. No. Nope. I got it, Arrakis. I'm a changed man. You can trust me. Right, I'm a you human. Gotta... What about a little bit I of pickpocketing? Maybe from far away, but they don't, I don't necessarily need to say that. And we, we, we're just normal people. I'm not a druid. Good. Uh, Ren, if you want to do pickpocketing, just do it far away from our end. Ah. Music to my ears. If you need any help, Uncle, I can help you as well with the maybe crowd distraction. I'm good at playing the banjo. <laughs> just kidding. Uh, what, what day of the week is it, again. Neil? When we arrive in Pipari? Are we there now? You are. It is Thursday, the 18th of April. You're arriving in the AM. Would the market be bustling in Papari? Papari has a market day once a week. Roll me a D7 to see what day of the week the market day lands on. All right, 1D7. You're looking How about I roll four. you a 1D8, and if it's an 8, I get to pick. Thanks. Okay. Oh. <sighs> Sundays. Seven. That's Sundays. Today is Thursday. Okay, so it's not going to be bustling. There's not going to be people with money pouches that I can have a little snatcheroo. Right. There's going to be like a certain level of shops that are always open, but the like big market day where everyone brings their goods that they've been working on all week from all around to town isn't here. It's just a, a regular slow day in the middle of the week. No, you want, some, you want a busy day for pickpocket. Wait, hold so. on, Nick. Before we get into town, I will catch up to Arrakis, and I'll call for you. I'll be like, Arrakis! And I'll catch yes. up. <clears throat> up. Why, why do you always walk away from us? We're, you realize we're a team, right? Yeah, we're a team, but I'm, someone's going to have to go and speak to the gods for us, and I thought it's best I do it. I know, but you even did it back when we were uh, talking to the nomad dude. I've been I searching for Secrets' tower for a long time. God, this is the first real lead I've had. I'm keen to make our way to Wickish and progress things further. I'm sorry if I've been too hasty. No, that's okay. Just, you know, I learned this in jail. We have to share our feelings a little bit. And if you're really hasty and you really want to do this, maybe let us know instead of just going off on your own. We're, we're a team and you're our leader right now. And I say, looking back at Ren. I put a hand on his shoulder <clears throat> and I say, um, this is wise council, Garth. Sometimes the best ideas can come from the most unlikely of places. I will heed your advice. Thanks, Arrakis. Um, hearing uh, Arrakis talking about Sigrus's tower, I'll, assuming I overhear the conversation, I'll kind of sidle over and say, what kind of magic items and stuff do you think we could find there? I've been, uh, I've been feeling a little weaker in uh, my old age. Wouldn't mind something that make me feel like I can carry something heavier. I'm like, See me kind of struggling with my backpack because it's heavy. You think they'd have any items that would make me stronger or feel well, young again? Sigrus was truly a legendary mage. I'm sure his spell books, if we can find them, would have all sorts of spells that could make you stronger or more youthful. As for what items may be there, if we're truly the first to find it, there could be untold artifacts of legend there. Um... Sigrus was a wise man. I know that he dabbled in necromancy from time to time. Perhaps there is some magical items that he might have equipped his summons with. Necromancy is a vile art. And honestly, it kind of turns my stomach to have to be associated with it. I really hope there aren't any skeletons or undead there. I I pause a little bit and I, Renatus, and say... um. Swamp is a dark place, as you well know, Ren. Yeah, but at least She'll the things there are slimy courage. and alive. She'll have to find your courage before we get there. I do not know what we will face. I would rather fight slimy and alive things than slimy and undead things. That's my opinion. I'm sure many would agree with you. Mm -hmm. I'm feeling yeah, a bit uneasy a about this one now. To the gods <clears throat> and cheese. It better be worth the most it, young man. Monster. It'll be worth it. Better be. All right. Um, well, the party. Wait, rolls. wait, wait. Sorry, sorry. Um, when we get into the town, run. 
Let's go and have a walk around the market. We should have a talk. All right. Let's do it. I'm here in this conversation. I'll say, just you two? You can come if you wish. Can I come? Everyone can I guess come. We can all, I guess we can all go to the market. Maybe we can all have a talk, then, no? Yeah. I love markets. I'll buy you let's, a few uh, meat pies. Let's address the gods. I can buy my own meat pies. Thank you very much. Yeah. Fine, then buy me a meat pie. <laughs> I'd say joking. I can all have meat pies. Meat pie, my friend. We'll all have a conversation in the market and all have a meat pie. It'll be a bonding Excellent. exercise. Yeah, we can all say what we're grateful for. I'll get us a beer. <laughs> oh, we did that in the <laughs> the jail. This will be uh, a speaking swamp stick. side. We'll, we'll get a speaking stick. We'll all take turns. Yes. Yes, definitely. All right. All right. So why don't we take our first break as the party comes on into town, and we'll pick up on the other side of a break. Hey. So we're in the town of Papari, and it's a nice rainy Wednesday <coughs> afternoon. I'm sorry, Thursday afternoon morning. I know my words. I'm great with words. I have all the best words, and I'm going to use them all. That's uh, you're in the morning in Papari, and it's raining. You walk into town. It's kind of quiet. There's some people going about their business, but because of the rain, everyone's like staying off the streets. But the shops are open, and there's some folks like holding a, a wool cloak over their head, or just with the hood pulled up you know, hurrying off to grab some leeks and potatoes for some soup from the, the nearby grocer, or maybe um, <clears throat> finally picking up that piece of uh, that leather belt that they had ordered from one of the, the leather workers. Um, it's kind of a, just a chill day by the swamp. The big imposing palisade wall sits in front of you that makes a half circle around the town, keeping the monsters of the swamp out of the, the civilized part of town. Um, okay, so we head our way into the market. Um, mm -hmm. the, the other two have sort of invaded my conversation with, with Ren, so I'm not going to pursue that right now. And I will instead say, okay. well, since we're going to be trekking through the swamp, you know, it's dangerous out there. There can be pit traps. There can be, you know, all sorts of terrible things. That I, I thought I might try and buy a, a staff to help me navigate the swamp. Do you think the three of you could help me find a good quality one? Oh, oh. yeah, I know all the best rods. <laughs> That's good. Good, good. Let's uh, let's split up and see if we can't find a shop selling them. Uh, I'll go with Growl. I'll go oh, with a rod. Yes. There you go. Perfect. There you go, Nick. Nice. <laughs> uh, uh, I'll take Growl to <clears throat> the uh, Rods of All Ages store. Rods of all ages? Yes. <laughs> that is fucked up. <laughs> the name of the store. <laughs> you know, you it's just to, the store. You get to the store. It's uh, named Rods of all ages, and there are the four shopkeepers. One's all old, one's Rod. young. They're all called Rod. Um, and they're standing there. Uh, okay. And they're selling their woodworkings. The, they're lovingly crafted and polished shafts that they've spent hours pouring sweat and oil into. Excuse me, Hello. Rod, I say. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> Comes the chorus of Rods. I'm Looking for you. Hello. Hello. I am what is, uh, Arrakis. What do you sell here? We are woodworkers. Woodworkers. We sell children's toys. We sell old man's chairs. We sell uh, walking sticks and front doors and sawhorses <laughs> and um, pig, what do you call them, slop troughs and... Whatever you want. I'm looking Always for... Always wanted a slop trough. <laughs> well, you've come to the right place. Tell me, what sorts of pigs do you have? I don't have any pigs. I would uh, like always to eat but you're looking myself. to get the trough before the pig, I understand. I always say don't put the trough before the pig, but I've never understood why. Anywho, um, tell me about your farm. I, I don't have a farm. I see, still in the market for wood. Well, can I interest you in the new Mega Peter uh Mega Feeder 5000? It is 6 meters oh long. God. It's ha half a meter deep and a half a meter tall and with a little slight incline when you you put one end up a little higher than the other, you can just slop the food on one end and it'll roll down to the other. Say Rod. Mega Feeder 5000. Rod, Rod is your name, right? I can't your name's Rod? Yes. I, I couldn't My name is Rod. Well, yes, okay. How many do you think, if you could put a lot of meat pies into the trough, how many meat pies do you think the trough could fit? In the Mega Feeder 5000? 
Yes, yes. Uh, at least a thousand. A thousand? At least a thousand. <laughs> whoa, whoa, I whoa, to, I turned to Garb. I, tu I turned to, to August. Is a thousand a lot? I, I whisper back to you. It is, but watch. Watch what I'm going to do here. Now, Rod, me and my uh, associate here are interested in, you know, testing out your woodworks before then. Do you by any chance have a walking stick that I can use for the day? And then we can come back. And if I'm happy with it, I will uh, then return it to you and purchase one of these. And I'll oh, slap That's not the how stores boy. work. Well, then how much for a walking stick for a day? Or a walking stick in general? We, we don't rent walking sticks. I can sell I would, you a, a walking you stick. You rent... Troths? Yeah, do you rent troths? We do not, no, no. We, we do not rent nothing. We, we only sell. Then how much um, for a soft wood walking stick? He, he looks between you, who's like trying to buy something cheap, and then he looks back over to Grau, who wants to buy the Mega Feeder 5000. <laughs> I'll look at him. I'll look at and him he and I'll just, say, he hey, 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 hey to... look here. I have the money. I'm the money man. <laughs> I have money. Hold on, Grau. I'm trying to get us the thing that we came for. Now I'd like another a, uh, rod will come over, and the the conversation will split as a rod good, talks good, to good. each of you, uh, Mister Mooten. The one rod will show you a collection of walking sticks. Uh, some of them are just like, I picked up a stick, I cut it off, I trimmed it down, I put some leather around the top, and it's fine. And it's completely Arrakis. functional, um, and it's like a silver. Nope. And then there's these <laughs> other sticks that are like definitely more carved one of them is more like a totem pole with different creatures all the way up and down it one of them has like you know it comes to a tapered point and then it's got like a spiral carving all the way up with a, a little bit of metal wire inlaid through it and then like a nice <clears throat> handle at the top um, and then you've got the one that has you know it's more of like a thinner branch and it's got like multiple layers of coloring going through it that it's either been stained or dyed or maybe it's different woods that have been put together but that's not the thing that sells this one the thing that sells this one is that like it's a little bit taller it comes like to the top of your head so you can lean nice. against your shoulder and at the very top of it there's this um <clears throat> crow looking face that's oh, been carved and yeah. so the beak kind of sticks out a little bit and yeah. it's got a, a pair of <laughs> minor gemstones for eyes oh i really like this one. How much, Rod? Oh, you're a man of exquisite taste, he says as he opens up his dungeon master guide to figure out how much minor gemstones are worth. <laughs> and I'll uh, inspect this rod. Oh, a very fine shaft here. As well, I just caress it. You know, rods for all ages. Uh, surprisingly, we do make staves and rods that can accommodate any size of child or adult. <clears throat> well, my man is... Well, sorry. My friend is a uh, he's a big man, so this this staff right here, I'll hit it on the ground. This is exactly what he's looking for. Glad to be of service. You know, you're my Ornamental favorite rod. Stones. Um, so 20. These are small, though. Um, yeah, the, the staff? 15 GP. Those gemstones are expensive, and the staff carvings take time, and that staining takes time. <coughs> it's a hey. nice stick. Hey, Grau. <laughs> Grau, yes. do you mind if I you mind if I borrow ten gold real quick? Um, Grau is gonna reach in his pocket. He's gonna count his gold. Um, he's gonna take a couple attempts to count it. In fact, um, hold on. Uh, nat 20 on the intelligence check. Oh, um, wow. Nice. You, will perfectly you know count your out, money. He will perfectly count out the eight gold in his pocket. <laughs> can, I, can I borrow this? <laughs> yes. You can take all of his gold to buy <laughs> this stuff. I take it. Um, oh, dear. Is that all the all gold right. you have, sir? Says the other rod talking about the <laughs> Mega Feeder 5000. Yes. Well... Why don't, when you get some more money, why don't you come back and I'll have better calculations on how many meat pies you can fill this trough with. I have. I also have five silver. That's that's great, buddy. That's great. And he like pats you on the back and walks you over to Growl and leaves you a, a garp. And then he just walks away. I... Well, now, my friend, I will 
purchase this exquisite staff today. I'll walk out the door and hand you the money right now if you'll purchase it for 14 gold. Done. He'll shake your hand. I'll hand him over uh, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 gold and silver. It is so. It's a very nice gesture, August. And I'll put my hand around Rao. Rao, we're going to make Arrakis a very happy man. You did a very good job of uh, keeping that other shop owner distracted as I <coughs> uh, talked this one into giving me a better deal. I, high five. Um, I, I high five you. Can can we can we go back for the trough sometime? I'll make you a deal. When I'm a rich man, when we're rich, I'll go back. I'll get you your own farm, and I'll buy you a trough. I, I'll buy you two of I, them. I don't want a farm. I just want the trough. All right, I'll buy, I'll buy you the trough then. Okay. But it's going to be a long time, Growl. Because it's probably going to cost a lot of money. I'll ask the shop owner as we walk out. Hey, Rod. Yes, 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 yes. How much <laughs> is the uh, trough feeder 2,000? The 2,000 or the 5,000? The 5,000, sorry. We want the 5,000. Oh, the mega trough 5,000. Well, um, for the, the low, low price of 100 gold pieces, we will come and assemble it on your farm for you. I'll be back. All right, we leave. Okay. I want to get you that card. Yeah. Um, Sooner so, than later. So Ren and I split off in the, the rain. You know, I pulled my mm -hmm. hood up over my over my head, and I say, uh, Renatus, I can't help but notice your extracurricular activities when we're in town. And another thing I've noticed. Is that whilst you have very deft hands and light fingers, that you're not so competent when it comes to sneaking and hiding. Would I be correct? There is some truth to what you say. Um, I'm a little bit more focused on moving quickly than quietly. I don't know how much you know about magic, Ren, or specifically about the kinds of magic that I'm trained in. But uh, when one has mastery over the shadows themselves, there is much that can be done to aid those who uh, are interested in, let's say, less mainstream ways of making money. I don't have the, uh, I don't have the dexterity for it myself, but I think some of my magic could be put to good use with you. Really? That's Indeed. interesting. In what ways could you help? Could you make me quieter or invisible or get me into places that I couldn't normally get to? Invisibility is a well-guarded yeah. spell. I'm afraid they didn't teach that one at the tower where I studied. So I can imagine. A lot of mischief dangerous. could happen with that one. But I do have a spell. Um, whilst it won't make you invisible, it will make you blend into a crowd. Make it so that... Uh, you know, you're unnoticed when moving between people. Not much use on a day like today, I say, looking around. But if the market were busier, something like that could prove very useful for someone like you. That's true. A spell like that and a day spent at a market town, cutting people's purses, could be very profitable. Yeah, well, I just wanted to have this talk with you. See what you thought, and uh, I like it. Could you learn more spells of this nature? Well, I'm sure that Sigris has plenty within his spell books when we go and get our fingers on them. Mm. But uh, you've got the mind for it. You're the man who knows the opportunities. So uh, now you know what I can do. If you find an opportunity, you let me know. I'll let you know. I, I might need a day to prepare, but we can make it happen. Yeah, I'll keep. Uh, I'll let you know if there's a town that we're coming to that will have a market day and I'll have you prepare that spell the day before and we can try it out um, yeah, oh, we could. I don't know if we're staying here tonight but we could try it out tomorrow before we leave just as a trial run yeah we can try it um, I would warn you though that the, the preparations for the spell can be quite uh, invasive I would have to douse you in oil from head to toe 
Isn't it just making, like, sure? a line of oil around a person? I don't think they have to be oh, silked. Oh, is it? Okay. Yeah, yeah, I think you just have to trace slot. a line in three directions. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Are All right, you, sorry. Are you, are you sure you need to oil me up? This feels like a not spell casting. <clears throat> it's a component for the spell. It's it's not, you know, it's not complete saturation. But there is a process involved, yes. You can... Okay, what kind of... Not like a stinky oil, I hope. Something normal, right? This is... Any oil could work if you've got a preference. I mean, I'm sorry, this just of... fits in. I kind of show up, Arrakis, Arrakis. I got the rod you were asking for. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, oh, I would prefer if you didn't happen. have a rod while you were oiling me up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, of course. Wait, you got me a rod? I say turning around to August. That's so kind of you. Let me. Wow, that is. That's something else. I see yeah, that. Me... Well, Grau it's, and it's I, uh, quality put our check money together. Feed off four thousand. <laughs> foot, you know. Five thousand. Grau. Grau and I That's put our it. money together, and uh, we thought we'd get you this nice gift. Here you go, and I'll hand you the gem encrusted raven rod. This is sick. has onyx stones for eyes, and then the the um the beak, you know, is nice and polished and well dyed, and then the, the rest of the crow, you know, the staff is like mostly dyed black on the top, but with like darker areas and lighter areas, you can really see the the patterning of feathers that comes off the back of the hood, of the head, and then it comes down to like these multicolored um, you know, sections that run to the ground, and it has a, a leather grip. What When you say multicolored sections, what colors are the feathers? <clears throat> Um, well, the feathers are just up on the top, and then it sort of just blends into a wooden staff that has okay. these, like, really nice earth tones in them. Okay. Like, these really nice. earthy reds and greens and yellows and oranges. So I'm to understand that this is a... This looks like a badass wizard stuff, you know? In terms of projecting an image, this is... It's on brand. Yeah, it's on brand. We, nice. we, went, okay. we spared no expense, Arrakis. We hope you like this it. Is, this is beautiful, August. I'm surprised that you could afford such a gift anything for my friends I smile well we didn't I'm taken aback it. it's been a long time since anyone gave me something so thoughtful thank you oh thank I, Grau as well I, thank you Grau was this your idea um <sighs> no it, 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 it wasn't my idea but I, I lended him some money to buy it with oh well thank you for that I'm sure I can uh, repay you soon so oh, Grau would like the Mega Feeder pieces. 5,000. <laughs> um, well, that sounds awfully expensive. I'm, what was, what does it do? Is it some sort of gnomish invention? It's a trough. Oh. It fits 1,000 meat pie. Well, well, well. That is We're going to get you pies. that trough. Yes, well, not much use without the pies themselves, though. You'd have to find a very efficient baker. 1,000 is a lot. Mm. It's a big number. So We'd have to go to a big city with multiple bakers, I fear. It'll yeah, happen. Well, it's not much use without the mega feet of 5,000. <laughs> That's true. Would it not be agreeable to just have a pile of 1,000 meat pies? He needs the oh, feeder, Arrakis. Well, it's just not the same. You see, sometimes... Back in the day, I would sometimes walk into cities and I would see... On the outskirts, there would be the farms, and they would have the pigs, and they would have these beautiful troughs, all filled with delicious slop. And I couldn't come near them. If I came near them, the farmer would come out, and he would scare me away. And 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 he would he would come with a with a sword or with a torch and try to shoo me away, and I could never get near the trough and eat like the pigs do. The pigs have it so good. I wish I was a pig. You know, one day, Gra, uh, if you really want this, I'm sure we could, you know, put some pigs to sleep while they're feeding. You could sneak in there. Get a taste of the good life, so you know. Happy. If only for a moment. <laughs> yes, well, we'll think about it next time we come across a farm. Well, uh, so I much. honestly, I am taken aback by your generosity. Allow me to buy you all something to drink. Thank you. Arrakis. Good, good. Yes, let's go to a nice, calm tavern. I know, I know the perfect one. Oh, what's it called? Um, <laughs> the Lazy Sheep. Oh, nice. Yes. My favorite spot. There you go. Oh, yeah, sheep's let's are go. lazy. A bit of a redundant <laughs> name. 
True, I think that's part of the joke, maybe. You ever try to catch a sheep, they just stand there, watch you, <laughs> it's, it's, as you rip no their guts it. out of their bodies. Yeah. Jesus. Right, let's go get a drink. So, I think we can go to the tavern. I will... I am quite taken with this stuff. It's beautiful. I understand that they've probably exhausted... I have an idea of how much money everyone has. So I appreciate that they probably just spent all their money on this. Um, I only have 20 gold myself, so I won't be paying them back anytime soon. <laughs> <But>, you know. <laughs> Thank you, Nick. You're welcome. At some point, Neil's going to ask for expenses, and we're going to be fucked. <laughs> yep. Well, we'd pay it the first of the month, and it's currently the 18th, so you oh, all fine. have... We've got 10 time. days, because we we're using 28 day months here, 10 days to make a bunch of money. How much, How much money gold do we need? need? We need like 150 each if we're trying to live a middle class lifestyle. Yeah, well, we're not living a fucking middle class lifestyle. Yeah, we're living on the outskirts. I, I don't <laughs> think it's that much, but yes, you, you'll need as much money as you want to. If I recall gold last time, I, I spent like 70 gold in total for all of us. <clears throat> All right, anyway, so I don't have anything else I want to do in this town. So I just spend the day having a couple of drinks, something to eat, get yeah. some sleep. So we're just going to, you know, you got here early in the day. You could continue through the swamp today, or you could chill in town for the day. Um, but I don't know if there's anything in town specifically to do. I think we've spent some time in the market and gone for a drink. So unless anyone is really in a rush, I'd say we spend the night. I mean, it takes yeah, a little rest, day to get through the swamp, spells. You know. Few opportunities for pickpocketing tomorrow. Okay. Yeah. What's our What's yeah. our plan for the next day? Get the hell out of here after we do some pickpocketing. Well, well, yeah. So we're just going. We need to cross the swamp to Keygate, and then I think we follow the road to Jaden, and then from Jaden, I think we head along the edge of the forest until we get to Wickish. Um, Neil, for the future. For days that we plan, that I know ahead, that we're planning to travel through mm -hmm. stuff, I want to prepare one cure light wounds and one entangle each day. Excellent. And if we're not Good. planning to be around a lot of plants, a lot of nature, a lot of forests, a lot of you know, I'm I'm mm -hmm. the d the d default would be two cure light wounds. Okay. I'd like it to be known now that since we're going into the swamp, I will be checking my bag every, I don't know, hour for gremlins. Making sure that they're mm. not stealing my fucking necklace. Mm. My mom's necklace. Mm-hmm. Okay. These things are also... Um, well, I, I think gremlin. there's nothing left to do. Sorry, what'd you say? I said I can smell a gremlin from a mile away. Mm -hmm. So I don't need to check. All right, well, I'm going to roll some encounter checks over here. 32. I'm going to torture one of those gremlins if they ever fuck with me. That way they know um, not to fuck with us. Absolutely. So we're going to carry a gremlin around <laughs> on a stick so they all know what's up. Yeah, we'll teach them. I'm sure they all have a deep abiding respect for love and life and care for each other. I bet they do. The gremlin society is known for their love. Yeah, they're egalitarian mm -hmm. poetry. Free love. Yeah. <laughs> yep, that's what you learned in prison. Yep, gremlins yep. are free love creatures. Um, two days later, you make it to Keygate. The swamp is swampy, unsurprisingly. There's nothing super exciting about what happens in it. <coughs> There's some, you know, creatures. There's some burps from the water. There's a, a close call where there looks like something that you think is a giant spider, but it turns out just to be a weird tree branch blowing in the wind. Um,. And we That's get good. to Keygate. When we get to Keygate, is the town busy today? Uh, well, yes. Market day is Sunday, as we just rolled uh, a moment ago. And today is Sunday, as you arrive in Keygate in the, the middle of the day. They will they'll do the casual searching of all your stuff, as always. Um, no gremlins on you. And the market is busy. Real busy. I warn the guard that when we pass through... The gremlins had set up camp at, you know, the waypoint in the middle of the swamp. Um, mm -hmm. And they were doing some gremlin poop activity traps. of setting traps and whatnot, of poop traps. So when you see people cross out, you might want to warn them. Appreciate the heads up, <sighs> citizen. Yep. Hail Verasi. I don't say it back. He doesn't care. 
Um, but now you're in the village. You're in the town during market day. I thought I had heard some conversation amongst the party about market day. Absolutely. The plan would be, if we're heading to a yeah, town on market day, Nick would have prepared the disappeared to the crowd spell that whose name I, I don't know. It. Yeah. And mm -hmm. what's it called? He will Personal pick. perception filter. And uh, I'm going to test the limits of the spell with a little bit of pickpocketing, slipping through crowns, going unnoticed. So yeah, when we get into the town and I see that the it's busy and the market's open, I look over to Ren and I sort of like raise my eyebrows <clears> and give kind of like a questioning nod. Yeah, uh, let's go yeah. get a room and do some magic. All right. So yeah, let's go and get in. All right, you get an in room. You uh, set up here. It's all cozy. You've stayed in this place before. Um, you can talk about the spell. Is there something so, in particular you wanted before you just head out and try it? Tell me, tell me about this spell because I know we talked about it before, but I want to kind of know about it. Like, what what is it? Is it? We talked about how it makes me kind of like not invisible, but just like unless someone's really looking for me and close. And I'm in a crowd, they just won't notice me. Well, the spell is known as a perception filter. Uh, you'll remain visible, but largely unnoticed. Mm. Uh, things that would damage the ability of the spell to uh, keep you cloaked would be <clears throat> speaking to anyone directly. Anything that would draw undue attention to yourself is likely to uh, render the effects of the spell um, you know, non-functional. Would, would that so, be permanent, or if I slipped back into the crowd, would then I be hard to detect again? Yes. Uh, drawing attention to yourself wouldn't break the magic of the spell. If you were to attack anyone, fire a bow, cast a spell, throw anything, things like this would actually break the spell completely and render it gone. But if you have a conversation with someone and then slip back into the crowd, you should still be you should still be fine. Okay. Let me give you an example of how this would work. Let's say uh, you're trying to sneak past a guard. Wait a minute. A... Do you... I, are you intentionally misleading no. him here? No. Okay. You read the last paragraph. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, so speaking to a person. Yes. Things that will break the spell completely. An attack, spell casting, speaking to a person, making noises that draw attention, wearing out of place clothes. Well, when you say, so if you're wearing out of place clothes, like if you walk into a building where people are dressed differently, does the spell just stop working? Even if you then walk back outside? It's, it's once people are able to um, fix their attention on you, once you're no longer sort of just passing by them, it breaks the, the magic of the spell. So if you like, if you were to walk naked into a tavern, everyone would be like, huh, what the fuck is that? Like that's, that's enough of a... An unusual thing that it would draw people's attention, and then the magic of the spell would be broken. But if you were in a nudist colony, everyone would be like, "Totally yeah, fine." This is the naked dude. No this one is... would care, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, so I tell the anecdote anyway. Imagine you were trying to sneak past a guard at a gate. If you had the spell on you and would just walk past the guard, he'd almost certainly notice you and try and start a conversation. If you waited for a large group to pass through the gate and pass through with them at the same time, then the spell might protect you from being noticed. Okay, let's try it out. Let's see, let's let's see if this spell is any good. Uh, what it yeah. does. So I pull out a pot of oil. I open the cork, and then I take a sniff of it to make sure it is what I think it is. It smells neutral. Uh, I then. So the spell, Neil. It says I have to make. What does it say? It's rather confusing. The oil must make contact with the skin or clothes and must form three full circles around the character, one in each spatial dimension. Mm -hmm. So I imagine that would be like you make a ring, you like get a bit of oil and you like make it around me here. Mm -hmm. And then there's like that dimension. So there's one that goes like along the shoulders and over the head and along the sides. Okay. And then there's one that goes up the front and around the head and back down the back. And then, as Jamie said, there's one that goes across, the you know, way. the shoulders or the middle. But you got to get all three I dimensions can't covered. by doing just his arm or something like that. No. no. But you probably don't have to go over my head. Like, you could probably, you know, go up my shoulder, <coughs> right? There's, like, ways to efficiently yeah, do whatever. this. Anyway, yeah. Okay, I do it in the most efficient way. 
I trace yeah. Goyle with my finger across his uh, form. Mm -hmm. Now, does the spell break if I look at him? Um, when you're casting it, like you, you trace the oil around him as part of the casting, and then when the spell is cast, you find yourself like you're already sort of aware that he's here, but uh, you know you might hear a sound and then get distracted, and you find it's very difficult to like focus attention on him. And since you're in a situation where you're you're really trying not to uh, focus too much attention on him, it's to your benefit to just sort of cast the spell and then lose track of Jamie. What if he were to like? Be walking through a corridor at the same time as another person would that break the spell context is dependent right if you're walking through the corridor of like a castle where no one else is supposed to be absolutely but if you're just walking down a regular hallway yeah um where other people are expected okay. to be then it's that sort of like I'm, I'm walking down a busy street 50 people just walked past me and i i saw all of them but i couldn't tell you any details about them cool so I finish casting the spell, and I kind of, like, avert my eyes away and go and sit down on the bed and start reading book. Yeah, I slip out of the room, and I'm uh, yep. ready to try out this new superpower. Uh, I'm invincible. <sighs> Can't wait. Yeah, you walk out into the town, and, you know, you're a, you're a likable, affable... <clears throat> enjoyable person you're used to like people giving you smiles as you walk down the street or like you know batted eyes and then they look away um you're used to a certain amount of like attention um just being you yeah, i'm cheerful and experience. friendly yeah you're walking down the street and like nobody's looking at you it's like you're you're an ugly person or a, 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 um, a homeless person with a sign you know everyone's just like looking away they're walking past you it's like you're trying to get people to sign a, um, a waiver or a what do you call those things where a survey a survey <laughs> right and they're like J just five dollars to save the whales and you just kind of like ignore them that's the feeling that you're getting um, no one's paying any attention to you and but they're just like slipping past you as you walk down the streets you're Five you're copper here, to save the gremlins. All right, but you're I, completely I, ignored. I slip away my way into the market, and all I'm doing is I'm basically circling the market slowly, looking for someone who's like <clears throat> middle class, lower, upper class, who's in the market, who doesn't have a guard, and maybe has like a coin purse, but like on their hip. Maybe they're out with their family. They're having a good time. They're not. You know, it's market day. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so there's three tempting targets that you can see right away. The first is clearly the servant of some household <clears throat> that's got money because she's going around and she's buying like, you know, two geese and then having someone like take them back to the house for her. And then she's going over here and she's like perusing spices. She must be like, a servant or a cook in a well-to-do family and she's got some money but you're not sure how much right um, i size her up does she look like she's streetwise or does she look kind of like a sort of easy target either like the the vibe she gives she gives off the vibe of it's kind of like if a librarian were a cook hmm you know, like, really good at this one thing, highly knowledgeable about this one thing, but also, like, sort of cloistered into just this one thing. Maybe not wise about the streets, but she knows her shit about, like, geese and spices and cooking. And who else have I noticed? The next person that you've noticed is a, a gentleman. He might be a merchant or he might be like a lower noble. He's in that area where those two social classes have like a little bit of overlap and you need sumptuary laws to really separate them out. Um, and this guy, he's got a nice black shirt on. He's got silver, uh, not I shouldn't say silver pants, but pants with silver accents. He's got like a little walking stick with a, a metal top. This isn't like a staff, but it's like the little walking cane. Um, he's mm. got a nice big hat on and he's got his like boots all laced up. And he seems to be perusing the market. He hasn't bought anything. He does have a coin purse at his side, but like you haven't seen him buy anything. He's just kind of like checking out what's available, going up to like little crafted wares. He does seem to be hitting up the like, um, not like the jeweler and not like the super fancy gold makers, but like all of the, the small people who make 
small amounts of jewelry or artisanal things and then come to sell in town. Like a little bit on the cheaper side of stuff, but he's perusing all of them and he looks like he's very well dressed. Um, Why well, get the like a Bruce Wayne Batman vibe from this guy? Like he's gone out making himself look like an easy target, but secretly he's like well built. The cane is a sword. He's ready for a fight. Like what's the vibe I get from him? I need a charisma check for this one. Oh yeah, okay. Let me give you a good <laughs> the best charisma check I've ever given. Mm. Twenty two. Um, the vibe you're getting off of this guy is one of two things either he like runs a charity for children and so he's looking to buy lots of artisanal goods to like help out this children's orphanage or charity and he has money but he's like buying cheap stuff because he needs it in mass for for some good purpose or uh these are his very best clothes because he's fallen out of favor and mm. these are the only things that he can actually mm. afford and it's a little bit hard instinct. to tell which one it is yeah mark three uh, hit me up mark three is actually a group of three ladies um Ooh. and they do have some money it looks like they've got fancy dresses with heady coats. They've got sunbrellas to sort of help keep the sun off of them. Um, they're walking around together with their like tightened waists and their, their bodices on full display. That might not be the right phrase. Um, their, their tits are out practically. And um, they're talking amongst each other, standing around, having bought some drinks from a, a local purveyor um, and are now standing in the market, sipping these beverages uh, laughing amongst each other while like pointing and looking at things but haven't <clears throat> approached anything yet they're just getting their day started do they have obvious money pouches on them yes but there are three of them together in a little group uh are they like when they go to a stall are they are they all like looking at a stall or are they in like a little circle like oh, ha, ha, pointing at things and like looking yeah. kind of all covering each other they haven't gone up to any of the stalls yet. They're still in the, like, we bought some wine or some beverage and we're sipping it and we haven't gone shopping, but we're, like, standing in the market scoping out where we're going to go. But they haven't made their decisions. Okay. Uh, I am going to walk around the square uh, nonchalantly. How long does the spell last? Um, the Thank you, muted. I think half an hour. Okay. <sighs> yeah, I'll, it's probably been like, what, five, ten minutes? Yeah, five, ten minutes. Yeah. I'm going to walk around the market square nonchalantly for five to ten minutes. And I am going to let them get a little bit drunker. I assume mm -hmm. they are drinking some wine. Mm -hmm. Their perception is going to get weaker. Um, mm -hmm. And they, they look wealthy, so they're not going to miss the money. They might be a little bit, oh, I was robbed. You know, but who gives a damn? <laughs> Right. Um, well, your instincts are good because certainly they finish their glasses. They go back to the one guy who's selling um, liquor out here. Uh, they fill up their glasses again, and then they sort of do that, um, <clears throat> that like little shorebird scuttle together over to the first stall. Um, and this stall is selling clothing, the corsets and dresses and petticoats and um, all sorts of just, you know, women's clothing has been brought from one of the nearby specialty makers that are like hung up outside and some things are folded and there's a couple of servants around to like make sure nothing gets too dirty or dusty. Um, and the, the three of them gather around the front little counter um, and are chirping together with the the marketeer. Shopkeeper is the is the is the stallkeeper is shopkeeper. are they a charismatic person are they holding their attention like oh my god you look lovely in this coat or oh you should buy this uh, one no actually the stallkeeper is like a she's got to be like a sixty year old woman with you know gnarled hands from stitching all the time and she's kind of old and she's got this gray hair but she's got like an immaculate outfit um, and she's very clearly the person who made these things and comes to market to sell them. But she's like sitting down in a comfy chair while these three pretty well-to-do ladies stand around her, her wares. Now, old lady's got major perception buffs. I'm gonna wait till they hit the next stall. And they're distracted <laughs> by- Are they like making fun of her wares? No. Okay. I'm gonna check. I'm gonna wait yeah, till they go to another stall and there's like a slightly more charismatic shopkeeper like entertaining them. 
Mm. Uh, maybe there's someone mm. they go and see them every Sunday and they have a little chat with them and that's the moment when I strike because they'll be too busy having fun right to see me just walking past and snatching a coin purse right. well the next stall that they go up to is um, a jeweler they've bought some coats they've bought some dresses they bought some skirts and now they're coming up to the, you know, a few stalls down, a lot of people around, but you're hanging out in the crowd and no one seems to be bothering you. Like every now and then someone like gently brushes past you or bumps into you and gives you sort of like, oh, pardon there, um, without thinking about it. And you can see these, these three lovely ladies and they're now holding up little bits of jewelry and like holding them to clothing that they bought or like to the little, you know, sample of a sleeve that they pull out or sample of a hem that they pull out. And like, oh, does this go to the other? And the three of them are all chatting together and, and they're, they're the two people who are working the shop. It's a husband and wife combination. And they're all like, oh, that matches your eyes so well. You know, if you had a little bit of this going on, it would blend in. And the, the five of them are all in like a little gaggle as a, Jewelry is matched to clothing. This is the moment to strike. I confidently weave my way in a circular shape. And as I, like, I basically, like, if I'm here and they're there, I walk a circle past them. As I'm passing, I snatch a coin port purse or two. If I can get two, I'll take two. Well, let's just do one at a time. You know, you're doing let's your do first it. pass. You definitely don't want to get <coughs> caught. No. Um, go we'll ahead. Their money. Pocket check. Oi. Okay. 90 percent success. Let's Ooh. go. Easy peasy. Give you have your little knife purse. out. You walk right past it. You kind of pull and swipe, and the purse comes off in your hands. Um, and no, one I don't seems stop. To be I continue. Wiser. I continue walking. All right, like a shark, you come back for a second bite. And I, I, I walk around slowly, and I glance, and I see have they reacted? They haven't noticed. Not yet. I go for a second bite. I go for a second purse. <laughs> go for it. Get all, right. all three. Fuck it. Get them all. Second Boom. purse. Boom. Even better Easy. than the first one. You grab the second one without any problems. Ooh. Now, as you like, you know, you get the purse and you go, trying not to draw attention to yourself. The personal perception filter is really helping with it. Um, you look back, and I need you to roll me a D3 because one of them is about to buy something. And if you roll a one, then it's the person who still has a coin purse. Oh, okay, so yes. So one oh. Yes! <laughs> yeah. She opens her purse, she pulls out some coins, she deposits it in the hands of the innkeeper, or the, the shopkeeper, and she clutches her things with such joy while the other two are still fussing over, like, well, do we want this or do we want this? Okay, and I really don't one. know if it goes... I swoop in for my third yes. strike. Third strike. Ready? Third strike. Yes. Oh, my God. This Boom. is 80. Oh, yes. good. Excellent. You grab that third purse and you're gone. I'm out Woo! of there. Like a shark yes. in dark waters, I'm gone. Wow. And it doesn't take too much longer. You know, you you walk on out, you get to the edge of the market <coughs> square so that you can at least see what you've got in your hands when you hear the cry from a fair hey, maiden. <laughs> thief! Thief! And then all three of them are shouting, thief, thief. And, uh, I'm gone. You know, I'm not even stopping to count. This. I'm not even stopping gone. to count. I'm gone. <laughs> They're stuffed in my jacket. Excellent. Excellent. I'm back at the bar. Six pints in. <laughs> Six pints in. Drinks yeah. are on me, lads. We just made some <laughs> money. Rob, you three little old ladies. You walk in and I'm fucking knackered right now. <laughs> You're toasted. <laughs> yeah. When when Ren walks in, do I notice him? Is the spell worn off or not? Uh, uh, by the time he walks in, the spell will have worn off. Yes. I uh, I nod over him as he as he comes over, and I sort of see the smile on his face. I sit down beside him and I jingle the pockets of my petticoat. Nice. Oh, it worked. <laughs> worked it like a worked. charm. Practically was invisible in that crowd. Ah, um, and then I take a very, moment. Very, very good. And uh, I count out <coughs> how much money we made. Rich. Oh, this is. We needed this. We're Two of them hadn't, haven't even bought their gems yet. No. They only bought the coats. XP. Think of the XP, actually. Oh yes, yeah. Sir. This is this is two XP per gold. Mm. We're about to make. If this doesn't count, then it never would count, right? No, that has to count. Uh, you know what? I'm okay with pickpocketing gold not counting, but I would be mad if we found like a thousand gold like Giga Sword, and I didn't get the XP for it. I think if you had to use your thief skills to acquire it, then it should definitely. Yeah. 
That's it depends. <clears throat> Partially, this is we actually just need money right now because we just spent yeah, some, yeah. right? That's no, good. Yeah, we need money. I I I don't want to like farm successful. experience by just using my thief skills randomly. <sighs> I want to do it in service of the party's goals. Yes. So, like I think one of the criticisms actually I got was that I was just thieving randomly, but like now we need money. Yeah, we yeah, actually need sense. money. Yeah. This is a good time to leave. And we've done it together as kind of like a thing <coughs> rather than just being like, yes. oh, I want to roll my big pocket check now. Well, well, well. You dump out the coin purses on the table. You know, not openly in front of the entire bar, but yeah. like surreptitiously with the, the four of you crowded in on it. And out will spill 42 silver coins and 88 golden coins. Oh, wow. oh, oh shit. The amount gold. The amount of money here is not insignificant. Three noble ladies have been robbed blind in the market yeah, square. We, should we got them. Someone he, is going to come looking for this money. Uh, yeah, as he pours the money out, my eyes go wide. <clears throat> Who did and, you rob? Put, put, put that away. Put that away now. We need to, I, scoop we it, I scoop it into my wrap money pouch. <laughs> and... Uh, <clears throat> Uh, now I have 138 gold. <laughs> five uh, five po pounds of coinage on me. That's how why don't we camp on the road tonight? <coughs> why do yeah. we leave? Let's get out of here. Well, I mean, we're leaving today. Mission accomplished. <laughs> we made some money. Yeah. Let's go. Let's do it. Where's Gra? Um, He is somewhere eating food, not at the bar. He's <laughs> making... <laughs> August, where's Gra? I, I don't know. I was drinking. <laughs> I thought you were watching him today. I was. Oh, you know, I, I was I, reading. I know where he is. I know where he is. He's at the pie shop. Uh, go and get him. All right. Um, Growl's not at the pie shop. I'll go August, to the pie August, shop. August, 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 yeah. August. Mate, you're half caught. Just be careful out there. The guards might be looking for people. Don't do anything suspicious. I haven't done anything. I'm just saying, you're half caught. You're drunk. Here, I'll. Here, I leave my weapon. I don't think I even have my weapon. Um, yeah, I'll go to the pie shop. He's not there. Um, no. Ha, <laughs> you panic. Oh, shit. Um, oh, Rao is... I lost Neil, my bear. Is there... Is there a lot of hunters in this town? Yeah. On market day? Yeah. Everyone's hanging their carcasses out in the public is there... square. Is there a store that has a bear carcass? There is a 10% chance that there is a bear carcass for sale on this given day. Only a 10% chance. Um, well, you D10. What do you want? What's the number that indicates there's a bear? Seven. Ten? A seven? Okay, seven. Growl's at the pie shop. Ooh. I find yes. him. Pie shop. <laughs> oh, thank goodness, Growl. I <clears throat> didn't know where you were. But I figured. You figured what? Oh, I, I figured you were here. Sorry. Oh. That's, yeah. that, that's, that's okay. I... Sometimes if people end their sentence on, like, I figured or I thought, that just means, like, they were correct, you know? Okay, okay. How did you I'll know I was how here? It works. Because you like pies. Where else would you, you be? Remember that about me. Yeah, of course. <laughs> You're such a good friend. You're my good friend. <coughs> That's awesome. Here, There's like let's have a five like empty plates of fucking pie. How much? How uh, we'll we'll do we'll do money at uh, silver a pie. Oh well, Grau's broke. <laughs> I'll say, let's go, Grau. Pay your tab. All right, he pays his final remaining five silver. Um, oh, okay. I thought you only had three. But... I have five. And uh, he will thank. Mm. Thank you very much for the pies, good sir. It was quite delicious. And he will stumble out. Okay. Out we'll you go. We'll go to the inn and we'll regroup. I told you I knew where he was, Arrakis. Good job. Good job. We've uh, we've got our stuff. Let's uh, let's go. Did you fill growing? Oh, I'm filled. <laughs> <laughs> That's where I leave it. <laughs> okay, let's go. Camp on the right. All right. Party 
sets out on the road. Now, before we go to break, which we're about to do, um, did I hear you say that you want your route to be to Jaden and then alongside the path like this? Oh, wait, you can't see my arrow. marks. Yeah, yeah. No, to Jaden, like, and then did like you want this. to do this? Yeah, yeah, like this, okay. and then follow the edge of the forest down to Wickish. Okay. Mm -hmm. I feel like that's the, the best way of doing it without getting lost. I agree. You correct, correct me if I'm wrong. I mean, I feel like it's kind of like a straight shot. Following the forest. The is alternative the best way. is to go all the way to Valebrook and then straight uh, west. It's like significantly longer. I mean, it's literally twice as long. Yeah, just do it yeah. in the forest. It's good. Yeah. Great. All right, everybody. We're going to go take a break and we're going to come back on the other side with a little bit more Save or Die Outcasts. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Save or Die. Our party is doing well today. Quick slaughter of the plainsmen with no one getting knocked out. Mm. Easy traverse across the marsh. A cool stick. <clears throat> some money. The luck surely cannot last. We're going to put on Guys, some traveling. I think music. luck is on our side. I think we should try our hands at another bar fight today. True. <laughs> <laughs> what could go wrong? We're invincible. We'll get him this clearly. Time. Yeah. We'll get him nothing. This time sure. Nothing can go wrong. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. All right. Well, it's going to be a few days to Jaden. And then it's going to be, oh, a few more days to Wickish. And uh, we'll, we'll take it from there then. So I'm going to roll some encounter checks real quickly right here. Nice, peaceful area, not much going on, just traveling down the road in the middle of April. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. That's yeah, a springtime, early springtime. It's a little bit chill in the air. Can you clarify? So is Wickish like an abandoned city? And this guy it's lives a village. in a village nearby. <clears throat> okay, it's a village. So there must be a path to Wickish. Right. So the map path. that we're looking at right here is first off it's unfinished i'm still working on it these maps yeah. take a lot more time than i always think they do um and secondly we're marking major towns cities and roads but that doesn't mean these are the only ones there's lots of villages scattered around here and there's all sorts of trails if you want to get from Jaden to wickish like the right the best thing to do is just ask for directions along the way well actually. we've walked from Jaden to valebrook many times so if there is a little path with the sign saying you know this way to wickish we would have seen it um, well, Wickish is, you know, the, between, um, Keygate and Wickish, or Jaden and Wickish, there's gonna be, you know, dozens or hundreds of villages, and they're not all gonna have signs at every crossroads pointing to them. Um, are you asking for directions leaving Keygate, or are you gonna wait till Jaden before you ask for directions? No, no we'll ask at Jaden, yeah. Okay. <clears throat> Uh, on the way to Jaden. The, the forest if on, directions. on the way. Nice and easy. What's, uh... Where is our nice and easy day music? Here How long go. has it been since we've taken our friends to the Jalen Swamp side? Just a few weeks, right? Mm, it's probably maybe a little bit longer. We walked quite a long way. Uh, You... That was on... April the 2nd, and today you're leaving Keygate on April the 21st. I don't think you spent the night in Keygate. Okay. Yeah, we didn't. Yeah. Okay. So, encounter checks. Right, that's what I was doing. Uh, one, two... Wait, and we get to roll. Sure, go ahead. Roll me 3d100. I want to roll one. I roll the first day. Okay. I'll roll the next two, then. Okay. Go, Nick. Classic. 21. On the third day. You saying that's an encounter at 21? My guess. I don't know. It is not. Ooh. It is not. You get to Jaden three days later. Well, okay. technically it's on your fourth day. This should roll me another 1d100. You got it. Oh. Okay. No, it's all chill. So if it's morning, we're not going to stop at Jaden. Um, as on through I'm picking supplies, that, basically. Yeah. yeah, we pick up supplies and <clears> ask for directions. And mm -hmm. We don't need to role play. Ask, ask the guards. Really. Yeah, you can just pick up supplies and ask for directions. Unless there's some like we're trying not to be seen, or if there's some yeah. sort of sketchy thing. Otherwise, you can just ask for directions like a normal human being, and it's fine. Yeah. 
Um, they'll tell you that you can cut to the trees, um, but the forest is big. You know, the forest is like 60 miles across, and you don't want to wander through the forest because it's really easy to get lost. At the same time, the edge of the forest is sort of sparse, and it can be hard to stay on the edge, but they warn you to stay at the edge of the forest near the plains. Like, you're going to have to take the, the full circumference route. But once you go down far enough, you will come across a trail. There shouldn't be any roads between along the outskirts of that forest, but there is one that cuts straight from Vale Brook to Wickish. Um, and so you just, you follow the outskirts and you walk for, for many, many days in the plains and eventually uh, you'll come up to something. Now we're going to give you one so, more warning because clearly, you know, you've mentioned you don't want to do this route, but the, um, the direct Jaden to Wickish route walks through um, untamed lands like there are no patrols there's no roads there's no enforcement this is going to be a little bit more of a dangerous area like more dangerous than the roads right um there could be wild animals there could be monsters there could be goblins or bears or, or whatever out there um we're, we're all having this conversation together so yes, when yes, the guys finished the explaining uh, i asked the party you know what do you what do we all think let's have a vote um we're not in a rush, I don't believe. Uh, we stick to the roads. Uh, the safer we get there. I mean, the ruins and the people have been there for presumably hundreds, if not thousands of years. I uh, agree. There's no time. We're not in a rush. We can We've just made some gold. And... So we can afford to live a little longer if we want to take the road. What do you think, uh, Growl, August? The consensus is to take the road, then I'm okay with that. Maybe we could stop in a Veilbrook and... Uh... I don't know. Hopefully, we get out on Sunday. Am I right, guys? <laughs> Bro, you got a view? Taking the road is fun. In the road it is. Um. All right. Let's get back on the road then. So you're gonna go to Veilbrook and all the way? Okay. Yep. Yes, sir. Veilbrook is the one town I don't feel super comfortable pickpocketing in. Yeah. Because if you get caught yeah. there, you go to the you go to the in naughty boy jail. Bad jail. Didn't you, you pickpocketed that. twice there? No, Listen. you did it in uh, Swampside. Yeah, I did, I did it in Keygate. Most oh, of my yeah. thieving is done in Keygate, I think. Or Jade. We do a little thieving. We just, like, you know, a little thieving. Um, on the days that on the road, at any point does Ren bring up the fact that he's got 88 gold that he's just kept for himself? Or does that not get mentioned? Oh, yeah, look, if someone wants to talk to me about it, it's like, well, I've got the gold for the party. I pickpocketed it. I guess technically, I suppose, and I'll kind of begrudgingly hand you 40 gold. I'm like, I guess that's your cut. Uh, I take it. Do you, but do you bring it up or do I have to bring it up? You'd have to bring it up. Okay, I think I bring it up eventually, probably halfway to Veilbrook. Like, I give you, I give you a, a more than reasonable amount of time to say something. You're so British. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just like, I've got... I mean, I'm not doing anything with the money. I, I stole the money fair and square, and I showed you guys. You know. Yeah. Browse yeah. is going to spend it on meat pies. August is... I think it, it, it's knows, one of those things, things where it's people. like... I don't want to say that I don't trust you to not give it to me. So, I'm acting like... You've just forgot to mention it, or we had an understanding. And really, I just feel a little bit more comfortable if I had my half... Not that I don't trust you or anything like that, but clearly there is a little bit of, mm. y you know, Maracas, uh Ren is just like, oh, a, sorry, I, like it's a lone wolf kind of guy. I completely forgot. Here's your cut. Um, the spell worked great. Um, Good. Yeah, keep an eye out for more opportunities. Um, there's oh, lots yeah. of things we could do with that spell. It can be used to hide an object as well, if that is something you can uh, find a use for. Interesting. It could be useful. Uh, a bit of poison into a Beast, perhaps, of some kind of assassination if we ever need to do that. I was uh, I was thinking, when we get to the tower and we loot it, and <sighs> Sackmore is true to his word, he's going to be outside probably wanting to check whatever we found. Ooh. It might be an option, you know, we could try and hide an item uh, using the perception filter, disguise it amongst minor trinkets. Mm. It depends on if he doesn't have to be sure. magic. And how yes. carefully those items are inspected. We'd have to know if there was a caster with him. But we would know that by then. We'd have traveled with them. 
Mm. The other thing is too. Um, we can hide items from there somewhere nearby. Like Go it back. depends on how close. Like there might be a way for us to stash items, and he's not going to be there twenty-four, you know, hours a day, seven days a week. Uh, <clears throat> we could, uh, depending on what wards there are on the tower. I suppose we could lie and say that they were only temporarily removed. Make him think that he couldn't go back there himself later. We could stash some stuff there, you know, we don't have to bring everything out. Mm, or, if we could get into that tower and you could study the ward, you could put one up yourself. Yeah, perhaps. That is the stuff of dreams. Don't tempt me, my friend. I can only hope that I can unlock such secrets in there. Even better if we could... No, you can. You, have you learned how to? I've heard wizards can lock doors. Have you figured that out yet? You lock something behind a chest or something. It just... It's a bit mundane for my tastes. Oh, okay. But yes, uh, such magic is possible. <laughs> Why are you giggling? <laughs> I've heard wizards can lock doors. Have you learned how to do that yet? It's just like <laughs> such shade. <Yeah. laughs> You it's can't even lock taste. doors. Look at this wizard. I, I could do it if I wanted to. I just don't fancy it. Uh huh. That's I'm sure my, you could do it. No, look. You, yeah. Listen, Arrakis, you could totally lock doors. We we're all we all believe in you. Yep. You could lock doors. Yes, I mean, magic has better uses than to save your arm the bother of turning a key. He's not wrong. Sorry, I wasn't listening. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> All right, you know, we have this conversation on the road. Um, we're making our way to Bellbrook. <laughs> yes, we are. I'm just typing some things that are not important. I promise I'm wasting your time. I'm not using it effectively. Mm -hmm. um, you have nothing to worry about. <clears throat> awesome. Excellent. Uh, we get all the way back to Bellbrook. It's got a big walls. You had a hard time here a while ago. You have <clears throat> some friends still in the city. Now, granted, you don't actually have to go into the city to, um, to take this trail. You could just walk around the city, find the yeah. trail, and take it. Is there any reason to be we in Valebrook? Well, don't we probably need to stock up on supplies and stuff? Although I suppose we could have yeah. done that at a village. Well, I think you could. Is, mm -hmm. is stocking up on supplies like part of our personal lifestyle expenses? Yeah. Okay, so we don't. Um, or are we tracking that? Neil. Yes, it is, Neil. It's not. I reread the rules and the personal life expense. I was going to skip it for this month and just bring it up at a time when we were going to redo expenses from the get go. Right. But traveling expenses are not included in Can personal Can we make a rule set expenses. in the future to include it? Because I just feel like it's a bit... Yes. Much yes. To, uh, that's yeah. why I was not going to mention it until yeah, let's... later. Okay, so it is included, but it'll be... <gasps> we'll figure it out. We'll increase the personal whatever. expenses yeah, yeah. to accommodate all this stuff. Perfect. Yeah. I mean, would we um, really be spending that much money on the road? Not really. It's just rations, really. It's a problem for it's another good. day. Right. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. Perfect. Okay. Right. Perfect. Um, so I have no desire to personally go into Valebrook. I if the party wants to. I'm August doesn't to. even want to go into Valebrook. Uh, we have no need to stop unless it's unless we were looking for jobs, really, um, or if we had a reason to go visit um, the magistrate and meet with her and treat with her and wine and dine and whatever it is. So yeah, I, I don't see a reason that we would go. I think we would pretty much just pass. Well, we would stop. Like, you just get supplies, that's it. And then we move on. Maybe yep. hear a couple of rumors. Check well, the lo local news, you know. If you're interested, Ron, we can go and check. Yeah, but, uh, you should always check the local rumors and local news. You know, there could be a feckin' rampaging horde of elephants out there stampeding across the plains. Who knows? Indeed. It's true. good to be informed. Well, then let's enter the city, then. You can go and do, do some talking around. You can find out what's going on. Uh, check the job boards. We can... You know, buy some supplies and meet you back at the gate in an hour or two. Perfect, yeah. Shouldn't be more than a half an hour to an hour. Right. What day is it that we arrive? Saturday. Big city like Valebrook will always be busy, though. That's true. Thing. That's true. Yep. Go get them, Potato. I, not a chance. Not in Valebrook. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, in maybe the, I'll do one. <laughs> we'll see. Into you the know. city we go. It's going to be great, right? CC. Do I spot anyone drunk in the street? 
Absolutely. Immediately, you spot a person drunk in the street. Like, you're handing your weapons over to the guards, and looking behind the guard, there's someone, like, puking their guts out um, against the side of a building. Uh, How well-dressed is he? Not. I ignore him. I'm not pickpocketing. 30 copper. Scum. (laughs) Yeah. Don't get in Um, trouble with the law unless unless it's really worth it. Uh, I'll pop into a tavern, and uh, I'll just ask, like, ask around. Hopefully, people are friendly enough. I'll pop in. I'll I'll buy a beer, sip it away, and I'll chat to the bartender if he's willing. And I will yeah. say, "How's it going? Uh, stopping by for a quick drink. Any news? Any rumors? Any jobs? News? Rumors about what? About the front? Well, I hear the empire is doing pretty well. War is going great. Elves been dealt with, and." Uh, just a stray loose of a loosely confederated group of kingdoms off in the east but uh you know i I don't think anything's gonna stop the formerly bannerless army Mm -hmm. i'll say uh hail verasi but i'll say it in like a very deadened sort of blank way and then take a sip of my drink drink yeah um raise the verasi may bellum guide our men i'm off adventuring any news of any dangers out there like locally? Yeah, locally. Just, you know, I'm, I'm traveling through. Well, I want to check. It. They say, and I, I don't know how much I believe this one. It sounds like I a lean bunch of bullshit to me. Over the bar, enthralled. They say in the deep woods, a unicorn's been spotted recently. How much are they worth? You, alive or dead? <laughs> I I don't know. Uh who would buy a unicorn? Could you even capture one? How would you how would you capture a unicorn? I don't know, man, but I think it your name would go down to the history books if you did though. Caught a unicorn? It would definitely be in some books. Yep. <laughs> yep. <laughs> On the lips of a lot of folks. But there's no way there's unicorns left in this part of the world. Not not these days. How would you catch a unicorn? It'd probably gore me with its big ass horn. Yeah, that's true. I heard maybe, they can maybe. teleport. Jeez, really? Yeah, I heard they like, I just teleport heard that behind you and the, they shank you like a like a thief in the night. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I thought they were noble, beautiful creatures. No, I heard they're bloodthirsty monsters. Think about it, okay? You ever hear the sea creatures? The monstrous sea creatures that live in the depths? All of them got horns, okay? A horn isn't something... Really? There's two reasons you grow a horn, okay? If you're a wild animal... Listen, I mm-hmm. live in the wilderness, okay? Animals with wild horns, they grow them to fight, or they grow them to show off. And I reckon it, like, if you're a horse with a horn, you're a murderous bastard. There's no other reason you got a horn. Well, don't, like, deer use horns to, uh, to duel for mates? Like, what if it's a, you know, a, a showy thing like that? You know, just like a sparring tool for the, the unicorn. We, they basically, the, the way I've heard it described, it's basically like a shank on their head. What? They're like murder horses, dude. There's no way. I thought they were supposed to be gentle, noble beasts blessed by the gods that heal people and escort people from danger and... And and cure poisons and illnesses and diseases. How many noble kings have you heard about? Oh, good king Arnald, or oh, good king Arthur. Uh, but in the end, they all turn out to be bloodthirsty murderers. They've got a dungeon full of maidens, and they're stringing up their enemies on the walls. They've got heads on pikes. They're eating people alive. And, but they hear, oh, he was so noble. Or you ever hear about a, you know, whenever a killer is found, all his neighbors, all, all, all the posts are like, oh, he was such a nice guy. He was so wonderful. I'm telling you, dude, unicorns, they're killers. Gah. You know, even if it's a lie, I'd like to believe that there's some sort of noble beast out there, some sort of goodness in this world, and it's not just kill or be killed. You know, that's, that's just... That's dark. I don't know if I want to live in that world. I'm going to believe the lie or the truth or, or whatever it is and pretend that they're beautiful, regal, I'll sit, noble I'll beasts sit back. to save I'll, folks. I'll sit back with my drink and I'll kind of sip it. And I'll say, well, maybe maybe there's like different kinds of unicorns. Like there's the good ones, but maybe there's the evil ones too. You know, 
Maybe the good ones are real, but maybe there's evil unicorns. Who knows? Like a rhino. Mmm. You ever hear the story of the guy who, uh, <laughs> uh, he, uh, he stuck a horn to a horse and painted it white and sold it to a king <laughs> for a king's <laughs> ransom? <laughs> <laughs> he didn't even use detect magic on him. He stole Jesus. a thousand gold at a single purchase. The guy was gone. I wish I could find myself a stupid king like that. Uh, man. Sometimes royalty can be so gullible. And I'll, like, finish my pint and I'll go, ah, anyway, have a nice day. What was your name, by the way? Uh, my name, they call me Jay. Circle J. All right, Jay. Circle, circle, Jay. You call me uh, Wiggly R. I'll see you later. I'll, I'll wiggle out the door. All right. <laughs> okay. Um, that's the rumor Hard that you picked up. Be a Wiggly R than a Hard R. Am I right, guy? <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. We buy the supplies. We meet Ren back at the gate. I yes. I go back to the okay. gate and I I tell the party about the story about the unicorn. What did the party react? A unicorn? I don't think we need to be worried about that. Oh, but think how much we money should... it could be worth. How would you wouldn't catch a unicorn. How would we even kill it? I don't know. That'd have to be we something we'd have to research. We couldn't even catch a horse five, minute, like, five days ago. Hey. Yeah. Very good point there, Robert. We didn't try to catch a horse. It's true. We didn't try. Ren, on the scale of things that I think you should be thinking about, Capturing a unicorn alive is not one of them. You would Listen. have to be insane and evil to attempt such a heinous task as to capture a unicorn. Oh, well, I didn't say capture. You can make friends with it. What if you just wanted to see it? What if you wanted to see the unicorn, man? Have you ever seen a unicorn? No, I'm not. Would you? Do you want to? Sure, yeah. Yeah, exactly. I stumbled upon it. Well, I'm not going to spend the next six months out in the swamp looking for one. No, of course not. I'm, dude, I'm just making conversation. Like, oh, sure, can you yeah, imagine well, if we caught a unicorn? Someone. How much you'd think you'd get? I wonder what it tastes like. This is where I'm getting uncomfortable, you see. If we find a unicorn and make friends with it, that's one thing. I'm not killing so a creature of pure good. I, listen, maybe unicorns are pure good, but let me tell you, every animal that I've ever encountered that grows horns is evil. Okay? Growl's gonna, gonna, like gonna, gonna walk up to you. Growl's gonna walk up to you and put a hand on your shoulder. And look you very sternly in the eyes in a way you've never seen him look at you before. Don't talk about unicorns like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Ren, you just sound like some drunk idiot at a bar. Ren will. He's like, all right, fine, whatever. You guys don't. You don't want to hear my theories about horned animals. That's fine. It's not a problem. And uh, I'm just, I'm just making small talk as we're growl. Yeah. Have you ever oh, met a fine. unicorn? Let's talk about something else. I, I, I look at the rest of the party upon hearing that aghast. And uh, say, well, there's more to that story. Let's, let's keep I, walking. Realizing how serious that Grau was about this, I'll apologize to him. I'll say, I, I'm, I'm sorry, Grau. I was, I was just trying to entertain. It's okay. It's like when I don't understand that I'm not supposed to talk about you mating with people in front of humans and stuff like that. Um... I say, anyway, Ren, you look, look overexcited. You should save your energy. You've got a lot to carry, and then I shove a backpack to him with all the rations and stuff. To me? Yeah, like, you know, I think I assume we're just like splitting out the rations to mm -hmm. yep. carry like we usually do. So I like throw your bag to you and basically, like, you know, yeah. save your energy. We've got a lot of rations, a lot of walking to do. I'll change the topic to um, whether or not um, fish. Uh, counts as being a vegetarian if you eat fish. Absolutely uh, not. <laughs> no. I tell you, that's a pescatarian. I actually knew one one time. Funny thing was, the guy claimed he was a pescatarian. But we lived nowhere near open water. So uh, this guy, functionally, he was a vegetarian. <laughs> if you asked him about it, he'd say he was a pescatarian. He'd say, well, I eat fish. It's like, John... Yeah, I've never seen you eat a fish in your life. He said, well, you know, but I would eat one if I, someone gave me one. That's like, well, this is a long time ago, but it's still a nice thing. That doesn't make Days any sense. Days later. I'm going to interrupt <laughs> this fishing right. conversation. <laughs> <laughs> we move into March. April? No, we move into May. May is the next month after March. 
um, <clears throat> on the 2nd of May, which is a <coughs> Tuesday, which is when Velthara, goddess of vengeance, begins to rise in the sky, we come across a small Mommy. village. Mommy? What? Velthara is my ex goddess. You wouldn't understand. Uh, don't know. <laughs> yeah. Sure. Is this while we're still on the road, Neil? Is this D and D after dark? Yeah, this is while you're still on the road. <laughs> the greatest compliment I could ever get is a a, a dungeon mistress who names herself Vilthara. <clears throat> That'd be it. Done. That's Mace. that's life. That's gonna happen. Someone, uh, one of you, all someone in chat right now is gonna. Start if you're a dominatrix, if you're a female dominatrix, please name yourself Vilthara. <laughs> Um, but that's not what we're here to talk about. We're here to talk about this village that you're coming across. And when you come across it, it's an ordinary very legit first. You know, there's a bunch of them on the road. You pass them from time to time. Occasionally, there's little trails that go off. And you wouldn't really be too concerned about this ordinary little mill town with its little, uh, what do you call it? Windmill turning a, a giant millstone and milling grain. But as as the four of you walk down the road, what form are you in, Growl? Human. Human form? Excellent. So we got a human who's just like free with maybe a pack and some <laughs> clothes. We got a clear red robed wizard walking with this really cool crow headed um, gemstone Gosh. staff. We've got this old man who's very comfortable in his skin with this like arming a uh, broadsword at one side and a dagger on the other and like that charismatic look and smile that he kind of like knows what's happening even though he's never been here before. And then we've got like the young man walking with the giant two handed glaive, right? You're in chain you're an mail. unusual group in chain mail unusual group passing through this idyllic peaceful mill town when the side quest to distract you from your main quest arrives in the form of three local farmers two women and one man who hurry up to you in not fear not panic but eager excitement as they they come running to you. Hello! Hello! They wave Keep and, shout your distance. and grab your attention. And they, they stop at a distance. What do you oh want? There's, there's onk eggs in the village! Please! Please! Uh, I looked to the party I'll handle and them, say, my lady. Okay, okay, where? How many? The two burrowed out. God. And they point. Please! Please! We've been putting these off for a long time. I think Neil wants us to fight some monk eggs. Let's go and kill some monk eggs. Don't put this evil on me. You do what your <laughs> character is going to do. I, if I put a death knight in a room in front of you, would you open that door? Yes. Every yes, single so time, Neil. <laughs> okay, I tell them, you need to Have evacuate the town. Uh, get everybody out. Um, every able man who can carry a weapon needs to report to... Oh, fuck no, I ain't getting anywhere near those things. Are you kidding? They spit acid. They spit enough acid to burn a man to death. Yeah, we're all we're going to throw, we're going to, we're all going to get together. No, 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 no. I, I start walking. You want to take care of it. Good, let's let's go. I start start walking towards the Ankegs. Ankegs are out of my paycheck, dude. I, one acid spray and I'm done. It's okay, That's only 8d4 damage. You can survive it. 8d4? Holy shit. Yeah. You're can now. you put them? Can you put them to sleep? I can try. Yeah, that's let's the only put way the I'm giant near evil it. insects to sleep. We'll sing them a lullaby. Rockabye, I'm cake on the ground top. Do you go That'll with work. these people? I'm not gonna go fight them, you... Arrakis, unless they're sleeping. Well, I'm not gonna be able to put them all to sleep. Well, then there could be more underground. I can oh, shrug. I'm not gonna give up my life these. for this fucking coward who won't even fight himself. We evacuate the town. We, no we leave. These things will keep coming back. <laughs> and they can call for help from the Verasi Empire. This is out of our pay grade. <laughs> the Empire's not coming. We've told them that there's problems. Other farms and villages nearby have been hit. They, say, they just come up and they, they tear your crops apart. They rip into your animals. I lost yeah, a horse. And you know what? They also dig up the soil. They make it fresh and nutritious that you can plant new crops in. And 
I tell you what, get me your three, <sighs> three strongest and bravest men. Get me your three, three strongest and bravest men. I guess it's a growl. What do you think, growl? They spit acid? Yeah. Nobody wants to fight them? Alright, that's good, growl. I need heroes. I'm not sure that's who we are, though. We just need one of them to be distracted. What we need is a few villagers on one side of the town, banging pots and pans, hiding oh. inside buildings, at the attention of one of the Ankh eggs. Well, I don't know, do you got like magic missile or something? Or you can why don't they just out? go somewhere else where there's no Ankhs? Hey, sir, why don't you just move somewhere else where there's no yes, Ankhs? Sir, home. This is where all of our stuff is! You can go some. there's others, you can go Do you know how long stuff? it takes to turn a patch of ground into farmable territory? You know how many no. rocks there are in soil? It takes generations to get ground this good. I mean, we can't just pick up and go. I did not know that. It's a whole livelihood. Thank you, you for informing me. <laughs> What'd you say? Um, he said thank you for informing me. No, I thought I heard someone else in the background of that statement. <clears throat> How much oh. are you paying? Ah, right. While well, the village has come together, we've talked about it, and we can put together um, 500 silver. It's not nothing, I say to Red. It's not nothing. 500 Arrakis. silver coins, that's a lot. Arrakis, you're only saying mm -hmm. that because you're not going to be in the front line. You're asking me and Ren to basically put our lives on the line to dodge an acid attack. I'm not interested. That's, that's well, twice. Growl is going to lean over. How much gold is 500 silver? That would be 500 meat pies, Growl. How much of the feed master 5,000 is that? That would be half. Hmm. <laughs> I want to do it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Arrakis, what do you know about Ankeg? Uh, like, how, how you know how strong are these things? They come in a range of strengths, I believe, depending on how old they are. They're burrowing mm -hmm. insects with chitinous shells that can uh, shoot acid. They're, they're meat eaters. They're liable to come up from beneath your feet, the ground itself, and. Uh, Suck you down into the earth. What about are, are these the stories? Could these be younglings? Is it like is it just after breeding season? Have these guys maybe just hatched? Like Neil, I roll an animal law check to determine this. Roll animal lore. Saying? Yeah. Do you have animal lore? I do. Twenty eight. They're not quite animals, but I'll give it to you. They're they're wild enough creatures. They're not they're sort of in the, the realm between animals and monsters. This is fine. You have no idea what an elk egg breeding season is. You know that they vary between large and huge, but their acid stream, sort of like a rattlesnake bite, uh, doesn't really change over the course of their life. It is enough that it will guarantee to kill a man who is hit by it. Like, 100% chance of death to an ordinary person hit by this thing. They also have large pincers and that can, like, rip your leg off um, without any problem. You know, um, usually no one they, survives a single melee attack from these creatures. Also, they got a little bit of acid in their bite. So, in addition to the biting damage, there's, like, a trickle of acid damage on the side. Given that yeah. I got a 28 on that check there, mm -hmm. uh, if I was to see said Ankegs, could I estimate that hit die? No, I think you would probably need to have had personal Anke experience fighting multiple different sizes and hit dice to be able to make that estimate. Yeah, okay. So I say um, the breeding cycles of Anke eggs elude me. And uh, to be honest, I've never fought one myself. So even if I got to look at it, I'm not sure if I could tell you whether it was a youngling or, a, or an adult. But as far as I understand it, their acid breath is just as deadly when they're born as it is when they die. All right. So maybe you're right. Maybe this isn't a fight for us. Well, isn't I mean, it, it depends. Dave. If you have sleep spell, okay. We do have two sleep spells. You have sleep spell, and we can find a couple shields, and we make a shield wall. Maybe it makes it easier to dodge the acid. The the problem is the largest ankhs are probably immune to my sleep spells. Oh yeah, sorry. Your town is fucked. Uh, yeah. <laughs> They shake their heads in disgust at these travelers who will not help them. Please! Um, 
We have no other hope. No other chance. No one else is coming by. Well, we Guys, can't do they it. They have no but other hope. Us. And it's 500 stuff. That's like half the fleet of us. Listen, Growl. We need help from your even, town. They won't even fight for their or for themselves. What can I'm not gonna help. Yeah, them. they can't. They need our help. I can. We I need have, a hero. I have, I'm not your hero, kid. You're gonna have to keep so, holding out. For Neil, you hero. said they're not animals, right? They're not natural animals. There. So no invisibility to animals. No animal friendship. Nope. No. Nope. None of that bullshit. None of that bullshit would work on these things. Those will work on, you know, bear and deer and boar and and mm. that sort of stuff. Mm. Not mm. on onk eggs. Um, and I get a. I mean, like, where are they? Oh yeah, you just ask. They will point to a field. Can I see them? Can I like move around so I can see through a gap in the houses or something again? Like, yeah, you can get closer. You can get close am, enough for uh, maybe a, I am not one hundred and fifty feet. I'm not saying. I, wait, hang on, hang on. I didn't say closer. I said circle well, around. Yeah, but you need. You will. You can get to one hundred and fifty feet where you can still see it. Is that too close? That's too a, close to the ankex. Yeah, that's a pretty fair close. Distance. Yeah. Okay. I am not following him. Well, then you're not going to be able to see one. You know, it's a village. It's in the village. There's trees and buildings and stuff. And, um, you know, you can get to a point and someone will say, like, it's over there. It's behind that thing. And you're like, well, I have to get behind that thing. I'd have to get, like, really close. That's, that's... Here's the thing. Maybe we don't have to fight them. Could we, like, lure yeah, them away? Yeah, them off. They, is there something they really like? Could we poison the ank eggs? Is there something that the ank egg... No. I don't know. In... Like, maybe ank eggs love horse, right? We get a horse. We kill the horse, and we put poison in the horse. Got gremlin shit or something, you know? The horse is worth more than 500 silver. That's true. A good horse, at least. Yeah. Someone's gotta have an old crappy horse around here that's no good. Only good for the glue. Your, uh... <coughs> that spell you linked, Michel. I mean, that could work. Entangled is gonna uh, work because they have acid. Um... I don't know if it's that easy. Well, if they're using the if they're using the acid on the roots and grass that I'm using to tie them up with, and they're not using it on us, I don't know how often they can shoot acid. It's eighty yard range, that. so you can cast <laughs> that from very far away. Mm. Mm. That's two hundred and forty feet. So. Guys, if we want to kill onk eggs, we need to do a bit more research first. I agree. You could just I really try and entangle on them. Here's the thing. I don't know how Guys, to kill it. So. I had these people are night. in danger, and they can't. They can't. They can't just move. Do you guys have any idea how long it takes to get rocks out of the soil? It's they can't. <laughs> they have nothing. <laughs> we. They need our help. Rao, if one of those onk eggs shot acid on you, you would die instantly. Are you guys sure you can't move? <laughs> they shake their heads in dismay. It's clear that you're not going to help. And they go back to their stuff. Did you say it was 4d8? 84. 84. 84. <sighs> no, oh, that's one shot's like that. every single one of yeah. us. Let's get no, the fuck out of here, yeah. Yep. All right, the party Welcome. leaves. Excellent. <laughs> on the road again, and we get to Wickish some days later. Uh, I'll count out the days, but I don't think it matters for our purposes right now. You can stop and get rations along the way as you go um, and, and gather your supplies. And you welcome to the village, or at least the center of the village of Wickish. It is in the woods. It's pretty close to the swamp, but not right up against it. It's a peaceful, lovely... Where's my music? Uh, a peaceful, lovely little backwoods. Um, there's not a lot of farmland here. There's some cleared areas and people keep some animals. But there's not like, you know, potatoes being grown or, or corn or something like that. Um, there, there seems to be probably a lot of hunting going on around here. A lot of skinning, tanning, woodworking, that sort of stuff. Probably importing grain from somewhere else nearby. Uh, the village is pretty small. As far as villages go, population less than 500. All right. Um, I think I go to the tavern. Yeah, there's a room. I think we're going to be here at least for a day or two. Oh, buddy. There's a tavern. There is a tavern, but it's only got the one common room, like the 
the main room where everyone hangs out, you can sleep there overnight if you want, but there's no like private rooms. So this is a, a yeah, real yeah. backwater. That's fine. Um, unless anyone has any objections, I think we just stay in the common room. You want to stay there? Um, Maybe. Um, I, I, I don't oh, think yeah, I can can't. Yeah, yeah. be in the common room. Maybe well, our buddy can house us for the night. Yeah, or we maybe. can just stay outside of town. I can I'll stay sleep with you, in the, I can sleep in the forest. You guys can sleep there, okay? Hmm. I'll stay with you, Grab. Uh, okay, I go up to the bar room and I'll get a, a night in the common room, at least for me and Red. Yeah, my okay. old back needs a soft bed, I'm afraid. Yeah. Ooh, I, uh, the common room is just I'm, a hard floor. All you've got is your bedroll to sleep on. Yeah, bedroll is doable. Good enough? Okay. Okay. How much does he want paying for that? It's like part of your traveling right. expenses. We'll mm. deal with it later. Yeah, yeah, but it's a. Yeah, I pay him. I'm paying him a couple of silver coins at this point, though. Ah, yeah. yeah. Presumably. Yeah. Okay, so I think when I pay him for the two silver, I also give him two gold pieces with it. And I sort of like I push it to him on the bar, and then as he goes to take, I put my hand on his and say, um, <laughs> "I'm in town looking for a a man named uh, Hallis. You know him." The Tanner? Absolutely. Well, yeah. yeah. Is he a Tanner? Sure, I didn't know that. But... Yep. Anyone else in town called Hallis? He's the only one? He's the only one. Okay. You got a shop in town? A Hallis son of Tyrus, right? Uh, I'm not sure. The old man Hallis? <clears throat> 64 years old? Could be, yeah. I do some mental calculations. Sounds about right. You got anyone famous in his family? <sighs> he gives you a sigh. Are you here to bother him about his great great grandfather? Alas, yes. I'm a sigh. I, I do apologize if this is a, a common occurrence. <clears throat> but I've been sent by uh, a lord. He shakes his head. Oh, what a burden that must be. A descendant from someone great, but you yourself are just a regular old person. Everyone coming and bothering you about someone you ain't never met. Well, uh, there'll be a few gold coins in it for him, so I don't suppose you can complain too much. Better position than the next peasant. Well, I ain't trying to get myself killed over nothing, and he just gives you directions to Hallis's house. <clears throat> Thank you. I'll move my hand and I'll yep. take the two gold coins. Yep. Um, okay, my head back to the party and say, all right, I know where Hallis lives. You want to spend the night and relax and do it in the morning? Or should we just go straight there? Go there now. I don't think it's going to matter if we wait till the morning. Ra, <clears throat> Ren? We can go there Sounds right good now. good to me. Okay. Yeah, all right, my head there now. All right. You make your way through the village cozy walk. It's a nice little quaint place. All the houses are built like sh actually fairly close to one another. You could have spread the village out, but everyone's sort of built real tight so you don't have to walk very far to get to Hallis's abode. Yeah, on, um, on the way, can I grab like a little sack or like I'm a coin purse or something? Yeah. Yeah, okay. I just do that and I put it, I, I just put 10 gold coins in a separate, in a separate thing. Okay, totally. Um, Shell out a silver for the, the, the cost of the random yeah. sack. Um, you can find Hallis's workshop. It is a two-story house, one of the few ones in town like that. It's got like a little barn out back where you can work if the weather's bad, and it's got a whole bunch of drying racks scattered out between the house and the, the little barn. Um, there's a, a well near the property but not on the property a little fence that goes around it an overgrown and poorly manicured and maintained garden in the front yard that's just kind of like gone wild um, and a little pathway that leads up to um, a little stoop and they're hanging out on the stoop in the late afternoon is Hallis or a 60 something year old man that you assume to be Hallis he's got a, a rocking chair that he's cozy on and he's just rocking back and forth it does the wizard and the man with the chainmail and the glaive and nice. the confident warrior with the broadsword and the strange man with no... Did, maybe he's got a quarterstaff? I don't know. Um, walks by 
He stops the squeaking of his wheelchair, and he shades his eyes against the sun, and he observes the group. I give him a wave? He waves. Uh, I take a few steps closer, and I say, Alson, Alice, seems your age has brought you wisdom. I won't tell you why I'm here. Uh, I hand him the coin purse. <sighs> he continues his rocking, and he just blatantly dumps out the coins in front of you and counts out the ten and puts them back in the purse and sets it in his lap. Mm. Well, shit. If we ain't got another mage coming by looking for the secrets of Sigrid's shadow hand, Archmage of the happy. Past. You are correct. I'm led to believe that you know his resting place, at least before Lord Sackmore got its hands on it. Oh, coming to grade my grandpappy's tomb. Well, I got you some good news and I got you some bad news. Uh, ten gold you paid me is more than enough for me to tell you the location of that old tomb. Uh, but the bad news is it's already been looted. Mm. I understand. Say, when a Sackmore came through here last time, how did he treat you? Did he well, pay he you killed like my dog. She... <clears throat> It's out of order. I'm yep. sorry about that. Yep. Well, uh, I hope that we can have a better relationship than that. If I do find anything there, and I suspect there might be more to find. Um, they always do. Are you, are you interested in knowing? <sighs> this is a mighty uncomfortable conversation. Anything in that tomb... <clears throat> Really ought to be my inheritance. Uh, but I sure as hell couldn't find nothing. Lord Sackmore came through and sure as hell found everything that he could. And, uh... Prospects of encouraging some young pup go off and... Disturb the bones of my ancestors. Well, it be... sends a shiver up my spine. I'll be honest with you, Hollis. I'm not, I'm not interested in the tomb, really. I'm looking for his tower. I ain't got a foggy idea where that is. Do you have any and... keepsakes or anything from from his time? I did. Lord Sackmore came, beat me with a stick, threatened to kill my daughters, and uh, had to give up the information. Did he take things? Do you know what he took from the tomb? Everything he could get his little grubby hands on. There were some scrolls, there were some books. Uh, well, not like books, but you know, some uh, moldy papers. There was some little bit of money, not a lot. A little shrine, some offerings, that sort of stuff. Now you go in there and uh, it's just bare stone. I tried to put some candles back in there, make it not so bad. Bones are all mussed up. I, I don't know how they were supposed to be, but I rearranged them as best as I could. Put a new shirt on the guy. The sarcophagus is open. Oh, yeah. Ripped open. Barbarians. The man has how a How do you know about uh, Lord Sackmore? I met the... at the unfortune... Uh... What's the word I'm looking misfortune. for? I had the displeasure of I had the misfortune of meeting him a few weeks past. Mm-hmm. I've been a fan of your great great grandfather for a long time. I study the same areas of magic as he. Mmm. Shadow Traveled. Mage. You been to the plane yet? I have not, no. I'm uh I've only left my, my wizard tower in the last few years. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Ever since I read of him, I've been intrigued by his work. I vowed to myself that I would at least travel to this area of the world and look for him. Well, that's what I'm doing. I'll tell you the same thing I tell everyone else. Uh, tower is gone, probably lost in the swamp and sunk into the pits, or out there somewhere and ain't nobody gonna find it. And uh, his best works off at the uh, the tower in Palanthas. Interesting. Well, I've not been to Palanthas, but I suppose that's one for the list if all else fails here. Mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Thanks for your time, Hallis. I appreciate that. I oh, hope that I've not been too much. One more you. thing. Yes. Because this is always bugging me. Everyone says he was born 200, 300 years ago, something like that. And it ain't true. All right. That's a transpositional error or a smudge in copying books. And everyone thinks he's 100 years older than he actually is. No, really? no. Well, I was born. I'm son of Tyrus. I was born when he was 35. He's son of Klatos. He was also 35. He's son of Gaius, who was 30 at his age, and he's son of Sigris, who was 50. So, uh, what is 50, 30, 35, 35, and I'm 64 these days. Well, I guess it is 234. Well, he was born 234 years ago, but you know he was in his prime, uh, not quite then. 200 you know. years ago. I always thought it was 300. Interesting. Some well. transpositional error. Someone, you know, smudged a little thing and then someone copied it into another book and a one becomes a two. And just like that, your grandfather is an ancient legend. But in actuality, he's just a fairly recent legend. You know, a discovery like this during my studies would have been quite the, uh, the great achievement. Well, you can I'm have spending that more one time on in me. the towers now. Yeah, well, thank you, Hollis. That's worth the 10 gold on its own. Splendid. Yeah, you all... Oh, you want to know where the, the tomb is, right? Uh, yes, I heard it's uh, near a temple to Flumbra. Well, it is the temple to Flumbra. Well, it was a temple to Flumbra. It's all broke now. Ain't nothing standing. Swamp has taken the whole region over again. There's actually uh, four small buildings all near each other, and uh, it ain't nothing but decay. You know, that swamp, it bubbles up, it dries out, ground's always shifting, shaking. Whole thing's mess now. Anywho, uh, you'll find if you had more or less due east I'm sorry due west until you hit the, hit the swamp then you go south a ways um, and he gives you a couple of, of markers and then he says then you head deeper into the swamp from there find a couple of other markers and you'll come across these four ruined buildings right near what I think is a new groomed pool of water uh, the staircase is in the sarcophagus on the surface and uh, righty ho Thank you so much. Uh, it was nice talking to you. And, uh... You too. It's better than us killing your dog, right? Laugh. Yep. It is certainly better. I was gonna say good luck, because, uh, you know, a lot of people that come by never never stop by on their way back out. I have a feeling they, they didn't make it out of the swamp. Uh, but good luck to you. What'd you say your name was, wizard? Sakara the Red. Sakara the Red. Okay. It's me. Best of luck. I'll see you soon, Hoss. Ha! Give him a wink. <laughs> Likely story. And uh, head out. He how gets how are we doing for way? daylight? Yeah. Oh, it's late. You know, this was late afternoon yeah. already. All right, let's call our day here. We'll go yeah. and get some sleep. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, <clears throat> I think that will take us into our last break here in the town of Wickish. Haven't gotten directions to the swamp based on the directions he gave you. It's probably a half day from here. Um, and we will figure out what happens on the other side of a break. Bye-bye. All right. So you're waking up the next day. There's no other guests in the common room of this tavern. Um, no. So the the four of you, three of you, and Garp sleeps out. Grau sleeps out. I stay with, with Grau. All right. You split up. It's fine. It's no big deal. Morning comes along. The tavern opens up. The innkeeper comes out. He starts <laughs> grilling up some food. You can smell onions cooking in the distance and maybe a, you know, a hint of, of spiced eggs. Who knows what else is going to be coming out here? You got your spells to memorize. Yeah. Um, this is one of those moments, Grow, where you said that you might be running into something more dangerous and you wanted to change up your spell list. What were you wanting to take on this day? Um, yeah, if we're if it seems like we're traversing a lot outside through nature, maybe through forests, I would go one entangle and one um, cure light woods. Okay, yeah, you're gonna be going through woods all the way up to the edge of a swamp today. Yep, one entangle, swamp, one cure light sure. wounds. Okay, all right. I say to the group as we all get together and we're about to head out into the trees. I say, just so you all know, for the spells that we'll need when we're there, I'm not gonna be able to be much use in a fight today. So if we have an opportunity to evade a, an encounter, I'd say we take it. Discretion is the better part of valor. 
Indeed. Smart. We'll avoid combat. Makes sense <clears throat> to me. All right. Cool. Um, any supplies that you might need on your character sheets that you don't have here? What about lighting? What about rope? Um, what about candles? Soap? Yeah, let's, I don't know. Let, Whatever right, you need, now's the time. Is, now's the time to buy it. I buy all shovel. of those things that Neil just mentioned. Soap. Yeah. I, buy, I buy candles. I buy rope. <laughs> um, these shovel. things are not part of your monthly expenses. These are purchasable thing so uh yeah you i'll cover them. this it's part of the cost of the expedition okay how much are we talking um village okay uh does anyone what does it is anyone missing rope does anyone have rope That's i have rope. question I you have rope, rope? <clears throat> okay we got 100 feet of rope you don't need any more rope then probably uh, you're going to need some sort of light, so you can do have torches or lanterns. Torches. Yeah, let's get some more torches. We've got like five torches. Excellent. Uh, each torch is 20 copper, but it can be filled with oil, which is um, um, on my table, but I can't find the word. Oh, there we go. Which is also 20 copper. Um, um, we got a lantern as well. Yes, you can buy a lantern, but they are more expensive. Uh, a hooded lantern is 700 copper. Seven gold. Oh, all right, I fucked the lantern. All right. Five torches, oil, a shovel. A shovel. A shovel oh, is shovel two gold. How much is it? Okay, so I, I just spent three gold on this stuff now. Okay. How much does a shovel weigh? Five, six, three? Four. You take torches as well, mate. Four. Uh, how much do the torches weigh? Two pounds each. Oof. Um, if I'm going to be taking the torches, we're going to be... We're already moving at light encumbrance, by the way. I can take some torches, then. <clears throat> I'll take Watch three the of the torches. Right? Two. Okay. These are nice um, torches. This is like late I... civilization torches. <coughs> not like <coughs> junkers that you chaw toss. I can only take two torches and I'm maxed out on weight. I give a torch to Ren as well. Can you take a torch for two pounds, Ren? Well, I'm not carrying my backpack because I'm close to my weight limit, but I can take a torch. Not we need this of... bear to start pulling his fucking weight. We need a bear saddle. Okay, uh, anyway, we got our torches, our oil, our shovel, and we head out to the swamp. Okay. We head out. Yeah, it looks smug. I like it. I have soap in my pack. Just want to be clear Excellent. on that. Why do you need soap? Because Neil said it. I think he, he said rope, mate. He said, I said rope. rope and soap. Well, oh, he said soap. Listen, too. there's going to be a moment in this adventure <laughs> where we're going to need soap. And you're going to be glad I have that. True. Yep, okay. I'm going to be looking True. for it. <laughs> Just like, <laughs> I got soap, guys. <laughs> let's, uh, let's go. Yeah, let's do it. Out into the woods we go. Heading further and further west. You've been given landmarks. The first landmark is supposed to be just due west from the town, only a couple hundred yards. And it's a tree that has like um, a face that's been carved into a, a cut off branch, right? And the cut off branch has just been carved into a person's face. It's not that far. You can find it pretty easily. And then it says when you get to, or, or Hallis said, when you get here, you're gonna put your back to the tree you're back to the town, and the branch on your left arm is going to point the direction to the next landmark. And you're going to follow that landmark, or you follow that path until you come across this really big rock that just sort of like juts out of the ground randomly. Um, and sure enough, you come to that landmark, that big rock. And then you follow that, you get to the big rock, you put the big rock to your back. Um, uh, you put the flat part of the big rock to your back, and then you walk along that pathway until you hit, <sighs> until you hit a pair of columns. These pair of columns, you want to line them up and then walk along that line of columns, and that will lead you, after a ways, after like a couple of miles, that will lead you directly to the fallen temple, which is actually a tomb. Okay. That's not hard to do these things. Now, the only hard part here 
is going in a straight line through woods for a couple of miles because it's real easy to get ever so slightly turned about ever so slightly misdirected does anyone have the direction sense proficiency are we in a swamp? I do not i got swamp survival we are in swamp oh, i got swamp survival yeah that's not what we're looking for here um I'm no gonna one have... has direction sense a high wisdom though Neil. a high wisdom all right well, we're going to have you, because you're in charge of these operations. Uh, non oh, I'm going to have to look it up the old way. It's non-weapon. Uh, it's non-whatever. Isn't it half? Yes. I just have to look yeah. up what the, the role is. Oh. It is a perception <laughs> plus one normally so your perception divided by two plus one nick you has got the highest perception i have 12. Uh, well you're the one leading this expedition so it should be you right you're the one who got all the directions and you're the one who's paying most attention to all of this stuff this is your quest ah oh, perfect <laughs> just have to not use those encounters that i made it's fine you arrive <laughs> at the temple let me nice. put your tokens on a map. Easy, we did it. Yeah, it was easy. You just rolled well, and then there weren't <clears throat> combat encounters. Look at that. I'm sure you'll find a way to shoehorn the Mars. <laughs> you have to wait around the temple for too long or something. What time do we arrive? Uh, you're going to arrive... It's like a four-hour walk here. So, um, late morning, perhaps? Yeah. On the way, I'm going to bring up to Arrakis. You know... Isn't the shadow plane like under? Like the opposite? It's the opposite. Well, it's not necessarily the opposite. It's a a shadow of this plane. So in a lot of ways it's similar. So it's like flipped? But uh No, not so much flipped. As my understanding is that it's like here, but the things themselves there are hollow imitations of what is here. What even is this plane good for then? Hiding things. Why was this plane ever made? You're asking a question for the gods. I'm afraid I don't have the answer to that. Isn't you it someone that who studies it. I just. There's always an opposite. There's the light plane, and the plane of shadow, right? And <clears throat> plane of life, and the plane of death, and everything in between. There's always an opposite, and towers usually go up. So maybe this tower, this wizard's tower, is going down into the ground. I shrug. Perhaps. I think if it's anywhere hidden, it'll be on the shadow plane itself. Mm. But, uh, maybe we can find some clues in here. Let's well, uh, stick together and explore these ruins one by one. You come to the area. There are four ruined buildings that are falling into the swamp, and this swamp's life is growing up all over it. The man said the sarcophagus was the entrance. And as you walk into this, there it is, right on your left side, <coughs> immediately, surrounded by special marked stones on the floor, a sarcophagus. Um, that appears that special. someone has Wait. placed bricks on top of the lid and pushed bricks up against the side to make it look like it's um, never been opened. I, uh, I take a moment to consider the, the sarcophagus and say a little, you know, not a prayer so much as just a few words my head. Mm. Rackus, why don't we look around a little bit before we go in there? Yeah. Yeah, let's look around. My eyes dart to the strange markings on the floor you said, Neil. Yeah. Is it one repeated marking, or does it look like... It's repeated markings. Little square carvings that, that um, have like a, a little zigzag wiggle to them. One in each stone. Do I recognize this design? Well, you'll sit over it. Um, I'll have you make me a check in a moment as you Okay. Walk around. We'll It'll take exploring. you a while to consider yeah. them. Uh, right, we all we walk carefully <clears throat> through here. I use my staff to check stones before I step mm -hmm. on them, and mm -hmm. you know, be careful. Yeah, uh, Renatus and Grau. I'm just gonna assume that you're somewhere over here checking <sighs> things out. I would like somebody in the whoa, party whoa, to make whoa, me. Whoa, 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 whoa! Hold on. Let's not make assumptions here, okay? <laughs> Is you know what they say what about assumptions, help. right, Neil? <clears throat> yeah. Um, as I panicked to try to find a cab, <laughs> there it is. 
Um, you know what? No, Growl thinks this is really fucking fascinating. He's like fucking... He's walking around, he's wandering off. He's touching the walls. He's... Is there... Is are the Do the walls have anything interesting? Yeah, they got weird carvings on them. Oh yeah, he's... Touch, he's like touching them with his human hands. Mmm. All, all soft over. and dainty. Yes. Mm -hmm. I'm looking for something specific in my search. For me looking mm. for like a pit. Like something that goes down. That's not the mm. sarcophagus. My mm -hmm. guys, my my theory is that it's the upside down. You know? Mm -hmm. It's not the wizard tower mm -hmm. that's fucking up in the air. It's the wizard tower that's deep in the ground. Mm hmm. The wizard <clears throat> pit. Nice. Okay. And Renatus Fur, what are you doing? Uh, I'm fascinated by the markings on the ground and over here where it's like overgrown I'm gonna like mm -hmm. carefully scrape back and inspect the markings like and see if there's one that's different Excellent. Garp you are in the position to roll me a die I would like you to roll me a 1 d 10 minus 2 and you want to roll as high as you possibly can on this A, a 3 That is not good enough Arp. You're inspecting things. You're over here, perhaps, uh, walking past this wall, coming down to these two buildings below to the south, when you, sir, are surprised. Yes, that is where the direction of the surprise is coming. You have figured it out. A frog. Uh, yes. Oh, no, it's bullywogs. Out of the swamp are a pair of of Bullywogs, who catch Garp by surprise. Wow, is that really what they rolled on their HP? Jesus Ooh. Christ. Um, and on this surprise round, they will, well, this one will just step forward. This one will do the full-fledged leap to attack. Nice. Um, and I the think water. the, the Bullywog leaping from the water high into the sky will be what triggers everyone to be like, oh my God, I think there's danger happening. What's that? Um, and I'm going to resolve these attacks <coughs> right now. The first one is just a step and stab. It's a 14 plus one is 15 to hit. To hit. Uh, the three. And the other one is a leap and natural one. Come on. You got to. All right. On the leap, we'll give it a, yeah, yeah, a death save for that one. That's a it's failure. Always. This frog wildly, um, well, he, he misses and he lands in the tree and he will take um, he doesn't take any damage, but he is going to have an initiative penalty, a major initiative penalty to his next round, because he's kind of in this weird brushy area. And Initial? with that, we're going to roll for initiative. Shing. Hell yeah. What do I hear? Do I hear combat? Uh, you see a glistening frog in the sky, uh, and then you hear the sound of cursing, and I think... August probably shouts out something like Holy Wugs. There we go. <coughs> okay. Combat music is up. Party is rolling initiative. Each other got to roll initiative. Didn't they? I don't think so. I don't know. He did. Yeah, he, he, did. he rolled he fast. Yeah. Wait, where did he, where did he roll it? I don't know, but it's there. I think it's just left over from the last one. No, no, no. no, I, no. I, I rolled just rolled in early. It was a nine. Yeah. Oh, you rolled in early. Oh, I see. I'm blocked. All good. <clears throat> All right, I'm up. Uh, Grau is first. Bear form, which is half my movement, right? Ooh. Uh, I think. Bear, do we say bear form is free? Half your movement? I can't remember. I also well, have no idea. Should be free. I I agree. There was something. I think it wasn't completely free. Um, okay, that's a half move. Yeah, you can bear yeah, form and move, move, or you can bear form and attack adjacent to you. That makes sense. I dig it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, that was it. All right. Can I make this? <clears throat> mm-hmm. Easy yeah. peasy. Boom. I'm here. Hello. Done. As you arrive, leaping from the water on the next initiative order is this other frog coming from the depths. Uh, ooh, we're actually gonna have to swim forward a little bit and then leap to attack the man in the armor with the spear hop. 
11, 12, 13, Miss. plus one is 14, because it's the flank. It's a 14. Miss. Isn't your AC? <gasps> AC's 15. I don't this know why. This token has the wrong one. Nice. Excellent. Okay. You survive. The attack will hit your armor, scrape against the sides, and you will come away unscathed. Uh, and the next creature to leap from the depths is another Bullywog before the party gets a chance to act. What do we want from these guys, Arrakis? Their eyes? This one uh, will leap to the bear. Wait, did we want their eyes? They're the worth spear. good money. Something's worth good money. With the spear and the hop and the stab. And it's a 9, 10, 11 to hit the bear. Maybe a 12 with flanking, but it's not good enough to pierce nope. through that thick bear hide. No Finally, shot, bucko. Arrakis gets his shit together. He pulls um, out his waved dagger. And he moves. <laughs> For now, I just move behind this tree. All right. This bullywug over here stabs straight forward with it at the bear. Another natural, natural one. one. It's not going very well. The last bullywug for now is going to leap from hiding. Um, oh, leap we're gonna, feet. This guy is yeah. no way to get in. We're gonna have to swim. We're gonna have to <laughs> swim a little bit and then leap. Um, and I think there's no actual like leaping attacks it's that can be done. For him. No, but yeah. he will land on the other side of Garp um, and then turn around and stab. 13, 14 for flanking is no good. Renatus, it's your turn. Um, my old bones creak as I sprint to help my former <laughs> bullywug nephew. <laughs> and I They're coming for me, for uncle. <laughs> Don't worry, <laughs> lads, I'm here. Me back. <laughs> And oh, I... That's the middle of a tree. Can I put you here? Oh, it's call. still back yes. attack. It's okay. still back attack. You give me, you give me the back attack. Deal. Wait. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait, These wait, three wait, wait. squares behind the bullywug are all back attack. How about <coughs> this is just in the here. middle of a tree? Yeah, Fine. Give me that. that way, I, I control this other guy. It's even easier. Perfect. All right. I arming sword him. Yeah. Nice. Good hit. Yes, your blade slips into the bullywug, and it pulls hey, right oh, back out, oh, and the boom, bullywug is nice. dead instantly in a heartbeat. Can I turn to the next bullywug with the dagger? He cries. Eight. Got him. Eight is not good enough. He's got that rubbery hide that just turns the point of your knife to the side as Garp's great glaive whistles through the air. I go down the bullywug. I'm trying to slice through his ass. 22. Ooh. Not a crit? crit? No, it's a absolutely a crit. Yeah. It's a crit. Lots of crits. 2d10? 2d10. For 18 damage. Yes. The bullywog is cut into two different pieces. The pieces are standing. For a moment. For just a moment. Uh, this fall. one right here thrusts his little spear in the direction of Renatus with an 11 dodged. to hit. Nice Easily miss. dodged. So... Um, and it's initiative round. I'm realizing oh, so that instead of instantly yeah, changing into bear form, I should have entangled because this is the fucking sickest entangle of all time with all the fucking <laughs> seaweed and plants yeah, and fucking good. these guys would have been fucked. <laughs> now I'm just a bear, so it doesn't matter. That one. I'm very happy. Out of my system. Oh, that's good. That one was your initiative roll, though. It, you know, it, it's within range, right, Neil? <laughs> yeah, it's within range. Okay. Not it's one. within range. Go for it. I got a six yes. on my initiative. Easy. Easy peasy. Okay. Boom. Renatus <laughs> fur. No, wait. Growl goes for. Yeah. Growl goes for. Yeah, growl. Yeah, yeah. It's all me. All Adam. right. Since we're not casting any fucking spells around here because we're not goddamn pussies, uh, nice. let's dig our fucking bear claws into some goddamn frogs, shall we? <laughs> bear claw to the um, bullywug that I'm currently facing. I'll call out 21. 2d3 damage. You know, I've just had a thought. This is P. Chell's third campaign in a row, and I don't think he's ever made a weapon attack with a weapon. Hit <laughs> nope. <in a row>. <laughs> he never will. The bear uses the fist, and Roy obviously did. No. Um, Cypher used Cypher used a sword. Cypher used it. Oh, Ooh, actually, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true. yeah. Fine. Wait, these um, bullywugs rolled five so e. bad. I thought like, they, they rolled well. Sucked so no, they rolled bad. Oh, is um, that why you were shocked by their HP? Yeah, they, the first two rolled ones on their HP. So you <laughs> critical and rip out the first Bullywug's throat before he has a chance to croak. And your second bear claw 
at the at the next bully walk. That's a that's a beautiful hit. You oh, shred the face. It's completely gone. The bullywug dies. Um, um, Jesus. Yeah. You look around. There's just jungle and dead bullywugs around you. I think technically I forget, you have an extra I, attack. Yeah. yeah can I movement. can I move and bite? Totally. Yep. Move and bite this guy's face off. Just as Renatus brings his weapons to bear against the bullywug. Out pops the arctic bear with the teeth, and the bullywug manages to like keep the bear at bay with the point of the spear, getting the spear like right around your teeth, but you can see those frog eyes are wide, Renatus. They're wide with fear. They're wide with terror as your turn comes along. Renatus lets out a fearsome battle cry with stony vocal cords and launches an attack. Whoosh, right over the frog it. as he ducks. Uh, and then he whips back around with his dagger. Thrust. Whoosh. And the bullywug is out. He's uh, he's disengaging. Um, he's he's taking a disengage action. The two of you can follow him. I can get a hit. As he backs this way. Do you have reach two with your glaive? I do. Well, then when the bullywug gets to about here. <coughs> uh, about here-ish, yeah. As he's backing off, you can get an attack of opportunity as he leaves there your you threatening reach. <sighs> Miss. Uh, the bullywug will just bring himself I into the water. In front of me. Um, he will just That's wade into gone. the water and sink beneath it. Gone. I pull out my murder hobo dagger that I did against the bard, and I'm going to start scooping out the bullywug eyes, and I'm going to put them in my sack. Thank you, Chris. All right. Are, are bullywug eyes worth anything? Nice job. Anyone hurt? I think uh, Autumn said these were worth like 50 gold for a pair. I, what? I don't remember exactly, but I'm pretty sure. <laughs> I like the idea of him making up this as a lie just to make Renatus carry around a bunch no, of Bullywug guys with him. I'm almost certain that Bullywug guys were worth something, and we made a joke that, like, you guys were going to come for my eyes. I'm pinpoint on this. All right. Uh, Rao is going to start scooping them out. Yeah, I'll, no, I, I'm like, hell I like yeah, that. money. God's been running about some eyes. with this fear that somebody's going to come for his eyes. <laughs> Take my eyes. <laughs> uh, I'm going to be the eye man. <laughs> yeah, I go back to exploring the uh, the buildings while they're doing this. Cool. Just right, between bro. you and me and the audience, Arrakis, mm. uh, you're aware that if you're going to be plucking Bullywug eyes and using them for components or Ooh. magical research or selling Ooh. them, that they're going to need to be properly preserved. <clears throat> and just tossing them in your bag is like... <laughs> not going to work at all and they're going to be completely destroyed by the time they get back to town like you'd need to bring a jar and soak them in like formaldehyde or something yeah i don't know salt. if you mentioned this to the rest of the party i think in the normal circumstances i might might but yeah you could salt them. where we are yeah you could salt them Ra salted bull i was gonna grow's gonna scoop them out and hand them to you we'll do a little teamwork assembly line here yeah oh, we're gonna be Excellent. rich we're gonna be rich grow as I take the eye from you and just toss it carelessly in my bag. You get eight <clears throat> bullywug eyes. It's beautiful. Nice. nice. All right. Arrakis, make me that intelligence check. <clears throat> or wait, let me look at your proficiency list. Maybe you have something more appropriate. Arcanology. Yeah. Give me a spellcraft check. Give me an arcanology <clears throat> check. Give me an intelligence check. Can I get a bonus for being a shadow mage? Fair. This is a time um, of Flumbra. This is, yeah, exactly. Exactly. There's no shadow stuff going on right here. Okay. Just okay. give me all the checks. Nice. 27, 17, oh, 16, oh, which is natural so one. You're trash. Jesus Christ. Well, as I said, <clears throat> For fuck's this sake. looks like an old temple. Yeah. Well, there's got to be more to it than that. There's all these strange carvings on the walls and things like that. Yeah, Arrakis, they're probably we got, like we got four runes. sets of eyes. Yeah, well, we're going to be rich. Yeah, we'll use them. Keep looking around. <laughs> <laughs> um, I will. Uh, I'll go over here. What's the one. What's the state of sunlight getting into these buildings and shadows being cast and things and such? Um, when the sun is high in the sky then all of this will be pretty well illuminated. There's nothing directly above it, but if the sun gets low to the horizons, then there's a lot of shade. 
I inform the party that we're going to have to stay until the sun starts to set. We may have to camp here. <coughs> yeah, that's fine, Arrakis. Yeah, yeah, not a problem. I spend a couple more hours, Neil, exploring th these buildings. I would like to say that maybe I could get another check if I spend the whole day doing this, but I do have some other avenues to pursue. Um, well, you explore it all, and there's nothing new in any of these things that you didn't see already. You can ruminate on the concepts, but it honestly looks like a small temple complex. There's carvings to the goddess Falumbra. There's moon cycles painted on, uh, you know, carved into the ground, but not like with magic runes, just like here's the cycles of the moon. And in between them all is where we put the sarcophagus because when you die, your soul returns to the moon sort of thing. Um, and it all seems like pretty straightforward, like frustratingly non shadow magic, just mm. like a guy was buried here and it's actually just a regular tomb. Do I get anything from the 27 on the archaeology? Yeah, you get that there is no references to Sigrid's shadow hand or any other great mages here. You're familiar with all the mage lore, and it's it is. It's not that you don't notice it; it is not here. So, in this room here, where his sarcophagus is, is it mm -hmm. decorated differently in any way? Uh, not really. Like, maybe once upon a time, hundreds of years ago, it was. But it's in a swamp, and everything is molded over and jungled over, and paint is chipped off the walls. Like, it's it's all in ruins. You've got the moon cycles around the sarcophagus, which are sort of interesting and is a little bit different than the other stuff, but that just seems, like, appropriate for a burial room. It, it doesn't seem... You would expect this tomb to be cooler. Yeah. Um, okay. While the day goes on, I'm going to cast my detect magic spell and look around all four buildings. Nothing. Not even a scrap of magic. Um, um, I need to wait for the sun to go down for the rest. While I'm working on this room, trying to like reveal the floor and see what's like going on in here, um, I assume Arrakis will pass by me at some point and I'll ask him, I'll say how goes it? Have you found anything yet? It's strange this place is just, it's like he I mean he's buried here, his body's right there but it's like there's no reference to him at all this is just like a standard temple it's odd Yeah but, I mean if, if he was truly a powerful famous wizard, surely his tomb would be a little grander, I mean I know it's ruined and in a swamp but there would be like a a plaque with his name, right? You would think so, yeah. There's nothing, right? L nothing like that, Neil. There's no, like, bronze plaques on the wall or anything. Nothing. Maybe it's all been robbed. It's old. People have come through here. Maybe all the good stuff was taken away. Maybe some of the reason these walls are incomplete is because people have come and, like, pulled out the sections that had magic runes written in it. Maybe... Maybe this is like exploring one of the pyramids of Egypt. All the good stuff has been taken centuries ago. Yeah. It's all right. I wanna, I'm gonna wait. I wanna sniff around. Yeah, you do some sniffing. Just in case sniffing. I find something. Some real sniffing. Now you're gonna ask, but Growl, what are you sniffing for? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm gonna say, I'm very familiar with the scent of the weird magics. I smell it every time I'm in Autumn's Tower. In fact, just I think an episode ago when we were in Autumn's Tower, you said to me, <sighs> When I said I was sniffing around, that I was, you know, smelling weird, different, magic -y smells that are very usual for her to be around. So that's the kind of scent that I'm looking for. What do I find? I see. Give me a perception check, Mr. Growl. I closed my character sheet. Let's go, let's go, let's nice. go, let's go. Don't mess this up. Come on. Yes. Nice. <sighs> nice. 31. Excellent roll. Natural 19. Growl. Your nose is filled with the scent of the earth, the water, of the frog, of the man. All that walking in heavy armor has certainly made August, you know, give off the most wondrous odor of a ma of a musky man. <laughs> oh, yeah. If you were, weren't a male bear, you might be mm. drawn to that, but you... You're moving on. What else is that? 
Is that, is that the smell of bones? No, it's not the smell of bones. That's the smell of mushrooms. Oh! And you can find a clutch of chanterelle mushrooms ready to be consumed. Fucking go in on those motherfuckers. Yes. What else does he find? It's just a jungle and a swamp. There's nothing else. That's what he finds. It's all right. Um, at some point, I asked someone to try and help me get the lid off the uh, sarcophagus. I'll come over there like the big, brawny, hot, yeah. sweaty man that I am. Before we do that, see if you can't give the sarcophagus itself. Uh, if we can move that. I will attempt a strength check, Neil, and I'll I think attempt to push. You help. If sarcophagus. all four of you work together, you can probably slide the sarcophagus. I attempt it alone first. Isn't there an oh, easier way to test shit. for this? 32. Um, the sarcophagus. 500 pounds. You can get it to like, it moves ever so slightly, like one corner of it, one, you know, it pivots <clears throat> around one side until it hits a rougher patch and then comes to a dead stop. It doesn't reveal uh, anything. Uh, I'm going to need. It. No, I'm it only moves help inches. Come on. It's going to take a party. Let's do it. Help me. Wait, yeah, once... there's an easier way to test this. I take out my water skin. And oh. I start pouring it by the edge of the sarcophagus. Does it, like, seep under and disappear? <clears throat> Not easily, no. Maybe mm. if you sit long enough, it'll do so, but it's, um... It's pretty close contact with the ground there. Oh, it's it, there's not like an obvious void underneath. I mean, it seems unlikely, but I'll help you. <coughs> I, I I get down and I start helping push. But I yeah. will say, <sighs> I don't feel so good about moving the dead. There's no dead in here. There is. Oh, come on, just move it. <laughs> They've been disturbed many times already. Uh, you can move the sarcophagus, and sure enough. There's like, you know, like a, uh, a six inch, maybe eight inch section around where the edge of the sarcophagus was. That's regular stone. And then inside is a staircase that heads down into the earth. Fuck yeah. Oh. Is there any scratch? I look at the stone where we've moved it. Is there scratches? Has this been moved before? It, no, this has not been moved before. Get in. Let's go. This is I didn't even need to do that. huge. Huh. It was here all along. This must be the way. It hasn't been moved before because people normally just take the lid off and walk down, but you can move the entire thing. Wait, but isn't there a body in it, in the way? Well, you never bothered to lo open it, but no, there's oh. not. All right, cool. Well, but let's go down maybe I shouldn't have mentioned that. I, I can't help but bring out the sass from time to time. It's just that the guy mentioned his bones. I just assumed <clears throat> that they were in there, but I guess this no, is- No, they're in the bottom. Yeah, all right, let's go then. Yeah, they're in the, they're the subterranean lair. All Let's right. Let's do the text Four. magic. You enter the tomb of Sigris Shadowhand. You head down a staircase that goes and goes, and the the earth nearby just sort of like leaks water, and then you kind of hit this rocky lair, and the water just begins to, you know, run down the sides. The rock very gently, very just as gentle seep down the side of the rock. The staircase <sighs> um, enters into total darkness, and so someone's going to need to light a torch. Yep, go up some torch, GT. Yep. We do right. it uh, and... Well, I'm not actually, on. I can. Yeah. I'll carry the torch. Actually, that's fine. I, I, yeah. I'll I'll put one of my I'll put my dagger away. Uh, <coughs> I'll hold the, a torch um, in my dagger hand. If Growl goes orc form, he has dark vision. Mm. Yeah. True. Uh, yeah. All right. Well, I'll, I think it's better I carry the torch, Jamie, because I don't but do we... anything with my offhand anyway. Oh, if we okay. have a torch anyway, it probably doesn't matter if I have dark, dark, yeah, yeah. dark vision or not, right? You might see a little bit further into the darkness beyond the edges of the torch, though. You will need a little works, bit Neil? of light for your dark vision to work. Just like a smidge of light um, for dark vision to work. And then it will... You're, it, as long as the torch isn't in front of you, as long as it's like behind you, um, you will have greater dark vision than the torch will illuminate by far. Neil, do I still have my bonus on surprises if I'm not in... Um, bear form. No, you need to be in bear form to get your surprise bonus. I feel like it's better to be the bear here then. Yeah, I say stay as the bear. Agreed. Agreed. Yeah. Yep. All right. All right. I go. I think we send Garp, then me, then Ren, then uh, Ralph at the back. 
Okay. I'll use my uh, long shaft to hit the ground in front of me. <clears throat> I'll scale uncomfortable. No. I'll keep my uh, eye out for like potential falling traps over our heads. Yeah. Excellent. Well, we're going to end our session here for the day. We don't have enough time to explore this tomb, and we should come into it fresh. The whole exploration before us. Nice. That's the first dungeon crawl? Yeah, let's go, baby. Of the campaign? Zoe! Ever? Dungeon crawl? Dungeon crawl. No, we did we one did dungeon in Tazadot. Yeah, we did, we did one, one in Tazadot. <laughs> oh, the final dungeon. Oh, no, we did two dungeons in, in Lazarus yeah, yeah. Expedition. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, well, that's we'll be it. back not next week or the week after. Um, so, yeah, we'll be back in two weeks. Who knows when we'll do Hardly Heroes, uh, but if you'd like to hear about it, we now have our campaign character creation episode one up on the Patreon for patrons. So if you want to go watch that or you want to watch the after show directly after this episode, please go to patreon.com slash save or die and join at any tier to watch the campaign episode one or the goblin tier to be able to watch the after show uh, every week that we're on. So cool. See you then. Remember, go to the Reddit, leave your comments in the r slash Koi Booth thread. Thanks for watching, guys. Check out the Patreon. And um, Nick's got a tiny dick. Take us out.